accept the, the return of the, of the warrant. Do I have so that moved. motion? So, so moved. moved. Do I have a second? Okay. All in, any discussion? All in favor? You held your hands up. We aren't voting yet by machines. Any opposed? It carries by far more than a majority. Now we are still in this, all in this room. We don't have to worry about the cafeteria yet. Okay. The next motion would be uh, we need a motion to waive the reading of the individual articles and the recommendations of the Finance Committee and to waive the necessity of seconding Finance Committee recommendations. In some towns, they read the whole warrant line by line, word for word, paragraph by paragraph, and you spend a lot of time just listening to it. Uh, because you have these copies, they were available on the town website, uh, we've had a good chance to look it over. We've had an awful lot of social media publicity about this. I think this is safe to, wear, to do it. Do we have a motion to do those things? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? That carries, I think, unanimously. Okay. The first motion, uh, Lynn, carried. It was not quite unanimous, but it was very close to it. Okay. Um, in that, so you'll know, You'll, you'll see tonight we get into Article 50, if we get that far, that uh, there will not be a Finance Committee recommendation. But I'll, I'll give you, save you the surprise. It was a 4-4 vote, so they have no recommendation. They may have other people making recommendations, so we'll deal with that when and if that comes up. Okay, a couple of things we've got to do before we start, and that is um, rules of the meeting. Uh, the first motion I've been handed tonight, rules of the meeting, uh, was that I move that only town voters be allowed to speak tonight at the special town meeting. Today's date, October 28th, 2021, with the exception of town staff and town attorney. And that's signed by Priscilla, I can't even say it, Priscilla Gemus. And uh, that motion has been made. Do we have a second to that? Second. Any discussion of that motion? Hearing none, we're going to have to vote by... Sorry, you second it? Okay, well, thank you, I heard you. Um, uh, well, let's, let's vote on that. We vote again by hand. How many people are in favor of that? Is there anyone opposed to it? It carries by far more than a majority, uh, but it's not unanimous. Okay, now the next motion. And here we're gonna get to maybe some more interesting things. And that is, uh, a motion has been submitted that voted that the voters at the October 28, 2021 town meeting be equipped with electronic voting clickers, these babies, that they will use the vote on all issues requiring a vote by voters. The voters shall have a 20-second period in which to cast their vote on any issue, voting to start upon notice by the moderator. So that motion was filed, and who, is, who filed that motion? Mr. Smith, was that you? No, that was not. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion on that? We had this, we already talked about this. These things were fantastic last time. Say this a lot. Any discussion? All in favor of that? Any opposed? It carries, I think that was unanimous, but the lighting here ain't too good, so uh, I'm doing the best I can to see all the hands up. Okay, so from this point forward, every vote, we're using these things. We're not voting by hands anymore, okay? So just remember that as we go forward. Now. Let's see what we got here. We have to have some motions about the meeting. And do you have that, Lynn? The motion, do I have that? It's been pointed to me. No, 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 the, we already did the warrant. I just broke my, my I broke mine. No, about the, me the voting mission. Okay, I'll find it. Okay, we had two motions on the floor. One was to we continue this, have it take a break at about 8.30, 9 o'clock. A um, couple reasons. Look at this people up here, 72 years old. My kidneys and bladder ain't going to last much longer than that. So, quite frankly, we're going to take a 15-minute break at that point. That was one part of the motion. Second is that we have a lot of materials to cover tonight. Uh, we're suggesting that if we don't start an article by 10.30 at night, that we postpone to another night. 
this auditorium is not available seven days a week. So we already had to talk to the school. The next available date would be a week from tonight, November 4th, same time, 7 o'clock. So depending where far we get, if we complete everything, wonderful. If we don't complete everything, we'd be coming back on November 4th at 7 o'clock. And Mr. Morrison, did you make that motion? Was that? Yes, okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Any discussion of those two articles? Hearing none, now we're going to vote by the electronic clickers. So we're going to have 20 seconds. Once I tell you, you have 20 seconds, okay? We aren't quite there yet. We're voting on whether or not to take a, a break at 8.30, 9 o'clock and to leave at 10.30. We haven't finished, simply put, okay? Do we have a motion up? No. Test question. Okay, well, let's play. Let's do this first. You're right. We didn't do the test question. We always do a test question just so you can try it out, see if you like it. Okay, we've already voted to approve it. The test question is, let me just get my, my phone ready here. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta get my phone ready. Well, there's one over here. The people hand me all this stuff. I suppose I should use it. Okay. Okay, we're going to, I think I can start this. Okay, we're going to vote. And the test question is, have you started your holiday shopping? So, when I tell you to start, you're going to vote. Well, then you'll be able to see actually how these things work. So, why don't we start that right now? Okay, voting is over. 20 seconds has transpired. Now, you can see right there, some people voted and some people didn't. We would like to have you all vote if you could have. Okay, so we seem to be missing quite a few voters. Would you guys like to do that again, try that again? What do you think? 638 voted. Are we in the second 500, is that what that is? No, we're still in the first, okay. 638 voted. Well, okay, you heard the clerk. 638 people voted, and that's pretty close to what we got here because this, this room holds 700. We're not quite full, but we're pretty close to 638, so I guess that works. Okay, having said that, I think we're ready to move on. Okay, uh, at this point in time, does, I'll start with Jeff Bridges, the town administrator. Jeff, did you want to make an opening statement? Do you want to make an opening statement? This evening, uh, there's a lot of big things on this warrant and a lot of interest in the community one way or the other. Um, as Mike said, we're all neighbors, we're all friends. Let's leave it in the room tonight, whatever happens, and remember that we're all neighbors and friends. And uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Mary Blanchard, the, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, did you want to say something? Okay, good evening, and also thank you for coming. And there are quite a few contentious issues this evening, and I'm sure we'll all handle it well, because I'm sure everyone is going to vote for what's in the best interest of the entire town. Thank you. Okay. Last and certainly not least, Kevin Smith, the chairman of the Finance Committee, did you want to say something? Yes. I'd like to echo the other two speakers and thank you all for coming out tonight and taking the time to participate in your town government. This is a fantastic turnout for a special town meeting. And just uh, as always, we always caution you to take time and consider your votes carefully this evening, and thank you for attending. Thank you. Okay, just an update of where we stand. Um, we are getting close to running out of clickers, running out of the 1,000 clickers. We brought 1,000 uh, a couple of years, uh, a year ago. We thought that would be plenty, but we're running out, we're getting close to running out. 
If we get to the point where we've used all 1,000 clickers, we'll, ha we'll obviously have people just in the cafeteria who do not have clickers. We will give them pink voting cards, and at that point, the uh, deputy moderator, Mr. McDonald, will count the cards over there. We, we vote those the same way we always have in the past. You hold a card up on a yes, if, they, if that's what your vote is, or you hold a card up on a no. So we'll then add the pink cards to these cards, to these electronic votes, to get our grand total. Uh, because we should be able to keep all the non-voters with pink cards in the cafeteria, we're comfortable with the security that the vote will be accurate. It will be a small number, uh, but uh, compared to the 1,000 voters that have the clickers, but it will be something that we have to count over and above. We don't want to stop the vote. A lot of people came out tonight. I think it's important for everybody to get some decisions being made. Okay. I think I've cleared up everything now. Okay, good. It's about time that we start doing a town meeting. And the first article on the town meeting warrant, surprising we're going to get to it, shock, shock, okay, is the Senior Citizen Design and Construction Project. Now, several of these articles we have tonight are two-thirds votes for a variety of reasons. Uh, when you're going to borrow money, uh, you have to have a two-thirds vote. A two-thirds vote when you borrow money is actually because it's not part of the proposition two and a half tax limit. You're saying, I want to borrow some money to do something, and I don't want it to count against the taxes, uh, but we have to have a vote here to approve it. Two-thirds of the voters would have to approve it. And within 90 days, we have to have a town election. And at that town election, a majority of the voters have to approve it. So it's twofold. Tonight's vote, and then the actual town election vote. So this is the first step. This is a two-thirds vote tonight on to approve uh, the sum of money for the uh, construction of the um, Senior Citizen Design and Construction Project, which is at the present address at 480 Main Street. It's basically a renovation and expansion of that building. So having said that, now we're going to start this. Speakers, again, if we have speakers, uh, do, uh, we, do we have people next door? Do we know where Lynn is? Not here. Okay. I don't think we have, uh, we're pretty full up. We must have speakers next door. I'm sorry? Okay, let me just, give me a second, okay? Okay, so we're going to do it, begin this way. I'm going to ask for a speaker from the, <coughs> we're going to ask for a speaker from the cafeteria to come in. Bill, if you can hear me, if we have speakers over there, if there are any, please come in and put them at microphone number three. And I need a speaker for microphone number one. You're going to put your hand up if you want to be called on. I think, and if you're on the table, we'll call from the table. That's a separate process. Do we have somebody here that wants to come down to be the speaker in that microphone number one? Wow. Why did you guys all come? I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm joking. Speaker number two for the balcony. Anybody up there that wants to speak in this issue? Okay, just one. I don't, I don't see any takers. Okay. Any speakers from the Finance Committee or the Board of Selectmen, and they have a volunteer? Okay, what's the question, please? Please, you have to come to a microphone. You can't just yell it out from your seat. Loud or not, please come to the microphone, too. Eric Gaspar for Deer Run Circle. Just for clarification, because at last town meeting, there was some substitute warrant articles put in to, uh, for consideration. For the evening, and if there was to be a substitute language on this warrant article, what is the specific process that needs to be followed for any substitute language for any warrant article that we might be voting on tonight? Well, I, I don't know that there is a substitute motion on this, Mr. Gaspar. But I'm just I'm just want to point a clarification. Okay, that's a in fair question. Sure, the the process is is that by our town bylaws, our finance committee gives the original, the first recommendation, the first motion. That becomes the main motion. Now, a substitute motion could work in a lot of different ways. It could be that uh, you don't like the finance committee's recommendation. You want to spend less money, for instance, on this article. It could be that you want to uh, change the language somehow. 
In a zoning article, you may want to change the distance in a, in a, in a particular measurement in a, it's in a zoning article. So you would prepare, hopefully, in writing, it does not have to be, but it's sure helpful if it is in writing, a substitute motion which says put the change that you want. Now, we have not had a substitute motion on this, so we're going to proceed with the main motion, okay? If we had been given a substitute motion, we would deal with that first to see whether or not the voters want to deal with the substitute motion rather than the main motion itself. So for instance, and I'm not saying this is the case here, this is 11,450,000. If you as a voter said that's way too much money, I'd be willing to spend 9 million for the senior citizens, but not 11 million, okay? Then that could be a substitute motion. We would deal with your substitute motion. If it passed, that would be the limit on the budget for the renovations. If it failed, we would then go back to the main motion and say, okay, uh, that motion didn't pass, let's go back and decide now whether we want to spend the 11 million as it originally provided. I think I'm answering your question. Yes, thank you. So just for clarification, there is no notice that needs to be made to the to the voters in advance of the meeting of any potential substitute language no. that needs no. to come. No. It seems counter to what we're trying to do here, but thank well, you for your, I'm thank sorry. You for your explanation. That's why people should attend these meetings. That's exactly why you're here. Okay, any speakers on this? Yes. Chase had his hand up, I think, before. Did you want to address this? Well, I've got to call Chase first. I, he got my attention first. Chase Kabinsky, 462 Ledmine Road. I urge everyone to support the Senior Center project. This group of seniors voted to approve two new schools for our kids. Chase, I'm sorry. There's one other motion, and I apologize, that we should have dealt with beforehand. And that's limiting the amount of speakers that we had. Well, the timing for speakers. Did we deal with that? The timing? No, we did not. We've been proposing a motion that speakers be limited, and that will just be voters. And I apologize, Chase, but I want to say this before you finish. That's no problem. I um, almost got there. That so. they be limited to four minutes, okay? Um, and we used to uh, uh, reduce the amount of time for non-speakers, non-voters, I'm sorry. You don't have to do that. So there's a motion on the floor. I think that was made by Mr. Smith. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, to limit voters to four minutes. Of course, the moderator has discretion at the end to decide whether or not uh, it should be extended only for appropriate reasons. As we have a second on that, any discussion on that motion? Okay. And this is one of the proposed rules. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying yes. If you're opposed, say no. Are you counting on <laughs> Voting is over. Okay, what do we get for a vote here? Well, I guess that wins. 614 in favor, 49 against. So we're going to have a four-minute limit. Now, Mr. Kabinsky, I'm going to give you a full four minutes. Go ahead. You got it. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. All right, I'd like to urge everyone to support the Senior Center Project. This group of seniors has been great for this town. They voted for two new schools, Tantasco Burgess. All us younger generation should really appreciate it. And let's face it, we aren't getting any younger. And when this building is done, it's going to be a beautiful place to go. I really hope this passes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Bridges, I think you were going to speak. Can we, can we bring up the slide, please, Janae? Sorry? Can we bring up the slide? Just want to, for those that haven't seen the presentation, so this, so the, the question is to renovate the existing building and expand onto the back. We wanted 12,500 square feet. At first, I want to say to Ken White and his committee that worked for seven years to get us to this point, thank you very much. You all did a great job in, to get us to this point. So a renovate, yes, please. Thank you. Can I take something else? No. Nope. So go to the next slide, please. So there's another I'm new right. entryway, expanded senior center. Next slide, please. So interior renovation to the existing building with uh, the new building have a new exercise area. 
Next slide, please. More multi-purpose seating room. The whole building's new. And again, this is online. Hopefully, you've everybody got a chance to see it. I'm trying to fit my four minutes. Next slide, please. This is the site plan. Uh, the parking, we're going to maximize the site for parking. Uh, building addition, new traffic flow, new entryways, uh, backup generator, all those good things. Next slide, please. This is what it looks like uh, on an aerial photo. Uh, what the new center will look like. The new entrance will be on the right side um, of the building. Next slide, please. And this is the financing, $11.5 million. Now, let, there, we will look for grants before we start this. Just because it passes tonight doesn't mean we're going to build it tomorrow. So we need the authorization to go forward, then we apply for grants. So we expect that number to change over time as we seek grants and raise funds. Um, but if the whole 11.4 million were borrowed, if you look at this column here, that's what it does to the tax rate in that particular year. So at any one time, it adds about 63, 64, 66 cents to the tax rate. That's not cumulative, that's each fiscal year. And again, if, we, if it is approved tonight, we have an election in 90 days. If that's approved, it's gonna take more than a year to hire an architect, design it, bid it, start construction, so it won't hit the tax rate for a couple years. So tonight is the first step for us to get going, to get uh, the project underway, and to start uh, renovating the senior center, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Any other speakers on this? Yes, sir. I'm willing to take speakers in the audience. I just don't see any hands up. Uh, Jamie Goodwin, 262 Main Street. Uh, please, everybody, vote yes on this article. Uh, just like Chase was saying, uh, so councils on aging keep seniors alive and they keep them engaged with their community. You know, our senior population is growing and we need to invest in them so we can actually uh, facilitate the services that will come with that uh, growth. Uh, so please, you know, just like Jay said with about the, they invested in the schools, our seniors have been investing in us our whole lives. We need to support them. Please vote yes for this article. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. I hope you weren't making any comments about the weight gain of some seniors when you said they're growing, but that's, <laughs> you know, uh, some of us are sensitive about that. Yeah. Anyone else want to be heard on this article? Yes, sir. We don't seem to have a lot of speakers. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> you hear the shush. <laughs> Ken, ben Ken Benson, 102 Cedar Street. Can Mr. Benson, please see if you can talk into the microphone so we can all hear you. All right. You can take your mask off while you're talking because okay, we'll good. clean the microphones between. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Again, Ken Benson, 102 Cedar Street. Good evening. Uh, I am president and treasurer of the Friends Group. We started an exciting new year for the Friends Group in September. We've been increasing membership in the group and participation in activities this year. Hopefully, Article 46 will be approved, and the Friends Group will begin a large fundraising campaign to help outfit the renovated and expanded senior center. We would appreciate your yes vote for Article 46 this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to be heard in this article? A, a balcony? Anybody in the cafeteria want to be heard? Do I see a hand up? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing a person and I'm seeing a hand. Okay, we'll get to you in a second. If you really want to speak and the microphone is available, please come to the microphone. It helps us a lot. Go ahead, ma'am. Christine Chamberlain, 25 Bennett's Road. I just want to remind you, we have not voted on the pee break and ending at 10.30. Okay. You proposed that, we never voted on it. We went, okay, well, that's a very good point of order. Okay. Let's finish this article, then we'll decide how we do it on this, okay? Thank you. Is that correct? We didn't vote on the pee, the pee break? Guess not. Okay. Sir, up there. Yes, sir, thank you. Gary Kelleher, 118 Ludmine Lane. Uh, to Mr. Bridges, um, Board of Selectmen Finance, uh, so everyone knows I am full support of um, housing or um, of, the, of the like for a senior center in town. But I'm curious because it was mentioned that this is still going out for bid, design, architectural um, construction, and so on and so forth. So my question is quite simply, how did we get the number of 11.4? 
Okay. Uh, who do we think can answer? Mr. Bridges, can you answer that? Part of the feasibility study that was funded uh, over a year ago at town meeting was to do a full uh, turnkey analysis of what the cost will be for various uh, different options for the building. So this building, the cost estimate was done uh, and then updated prior to town meeting. So we had an architect with a cost estimating group put together the necessary numbers and provide those to us to get the $11.4 million. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Um, any other discussion on this? Just to bring you up to date, what the town clerk is telling me is that we're getting close to capacity uh, here, and we've got to figure out what we're going to do if we're over 1,000 voters, what we're going to do if we run out of seats altogether. Uh, running out of seats altogether is a problem. Uh, running out of the clickers, we can pass out the, the uh, pig stickers as far as we can go, but just giving you the heads up, we're not making a decision, we're just talking about it. Okay, now, any other speakers on this article? Let's finish this, and we'll talk about pee breaks after, okay? Okay, any other speakers on the Article 46? Any action we take and, and it's completed while we had a, a, a quorum is legitimate, it's done, okay? Even if we have to break the meeting because we don't have enough room for everybody. That is a possibility, but we'll cross that bridge, so to speak. I won't make any horse jokes, but we'll leave that out of it. Okay, very good. Having said that, are we ready to vote then on this article? It's a two-thirds vote. Okay, remember, green button is yes, red button is no. We're going to start the count right now. Okay, we're done. Okay. You see up on Here's one of the advantages of this system. You don't have to count on the mathematical skill of the moderator. It even tells you if it passed or not. Okay. It tells you where you got two thirds. So we're done with this. Okay. Now, let's go back to the P break and the breaking at 1030. Okay. We had a motion on the floor, and God knows how we got off track. We did. So the motion is to take a pre-break at 8.30 or 9. We may be changing that again in this capacity thing, but uh, and to end the meeting, meaning we won't start another article after 10.30. If at 10.30 we're in the middle of an article, let me finish, please. OK. Then let's wait. That's the vote we have from this. OK. Give them a couple of minutes to do the count. Unfortunately, with the tickets, you got to count them individually. That's why we have our deputy moderator, duly appointed, duly sworn in, over there, who's totally uh, capable of counting votes and giving us the result. So we don't have communications by telephone. They can hear what we're saying. We can't hear what they're saying, though, so that's the problem. Yes. Here, the big distinction between the clickers and hand counting. It just takes a heck of a lot longer to do the hand counting. That's why we think this, the clickers are so great. We ordered the thousand and we thought in our wildest dreams we'd never use a thousand at a town meeting. Yeah, we're, no, no.
here we have 12 yeses and two noes. So by my public school mathematics, that makes the yeses 660 and the noes 126. It would not change a two-thirds majority. It still passes by far more. Okay. So let's go back now. We gotta visit the pee break and the and the quitting time, I guess. I guess the motion was made if all the fall to all we never got it voted on. It was made and seconded. Uh, the issue is we want to take a pre-break at 8.30, 9 o'clock. That coincides, by the way, uh, seniors, with the time that the bus is coming to pick you up. So that's kind of why we tied it to that. 9.30. 9.30. don't tell me this. 9.30. Okay. Okay. Well, anyways, it's, it's close to that. That's part A. Part B is that if we don't start an article by 10.30, we'll break to another night. That night will be November the 4th. Same time, same bat station right here at the Tantasco Auditorium uh, to continue on wherever we are. If, however, we have begun to discuss an article, we're not going to quit in the middle. We're going to bring that article to a conclusion. At whatever time that happens to end, it ends. Uh, we have the issue of uh, that there are three articles involving the, which come up right now, involving the uh, uh, Equine Center, which are related, three zoning articles. We'll have to cross that bridge if we don't get them done by 1030, but given the hour, pretty good chance we will. Okay, so uh, we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor of taking a pee break at 9, 930, and take, I'm sorry, strike that. 830, 9 o'clock, just where we are in an article. We try to do it at the end of an article, and then take the close for the night at 1030, signified by voting yes. This is a majority vote. Starting now. Stop, please. We stopped, aren't we? No, it just takes time for to, to come into the system. It's computers. God bless them. Now, you guys cannot display that until. So we're keeping it open because right yeah. now we are waiting for the pads. Okay. But you have to stop the voting period, don't you? Well, if we stop the voting, then it's going to show. Maybe the option. But see, the option is people are still.
We have, next door has reported, they have 24 votes, all no, okay? However, we have 457 yeses, 325 noes. If you add the 24 to the 325, that becomes 349. So God bless America, we get a pee break. Okay, <laughs> and we'll be quitting at 1030. Okay, now, having said all that, we are now getting at a crisis point. I need a five minute break to figure out what we're gonna do about, we're running out of, we're out of clickers and we're out of uh, seats. Okay, everybody's gonna take a five minute break. I have to administratively. I suggest you stay here. Don't go anywhere, because we're not going to be going anywhere. Okay. Everybody stop for a second. Let me turn this off. Article. The next article is the first of three articles that affect the Equine Center. Now, if we could prepare everybody in your seat, please. Really need your attention for this. This is important. These are zoning articles, the next three articles. We talked about borrowing articles need a two-thirds vote. Well, zoning articles also need a two-thirds vote. And we're gonna go through these one by one and we'll see how the votes turn out. Now, same rules on speakers. Let's see if we can get it to work this time. We didn't have a lot of speakers last time. What we're asking is that if you're in the main lower auditorium, you want to speak, put your hand up, I will call upon you, and you can approach the microphone. When you're finished speaking, I will thank you for your speaking, and I'll ask for another volunteer for microphone number one. Once we're done with that, we will, add, we will go on to microphone number two, if there are speakers up there. And the same rule, once you're done speaking, I'll ask for another volunteer for speaker number two. Speaker number three is going to be handled by Mr. McDonald in the other room. He can hear this, he can't talk to us, but he can hear us, and he's going to select a speaker to come over and be there for number three. So we'll have at one point three people standing at microphones waiting for their turn to speak. But the advantage is after we finish with that person, we'll identify the next speaker, he or she can come down to the microphone while the second speaker or the third speaker, wherever it is, is talking. So it saves us some travel time, if you will, okay? That's what we're trying to do. Okay, this is not how we've done town meetings before, but hopefully we can get it done this way. Now, having said that, I need speakers for the three microphones. Attorney Davis, we're gonna have you at speaker number one. Do I have a speaker up there in the, who wants to speak in the balcony? I can't, the vision up there is not good. It's very dark in parts of that balcony. I don't see any hands. Yes, I do, okay. Why don't you come down and stand by the microphone? And again, don't forget to give us your name and address. We want to mail you those thank you cards. Okay, do we have a speaker, Mr. McDonald, from the cafeteria who wants to come over and join us? <clears throat> and he was just in the doorway, so he went to get somebody. And I think while he's searching somebody, I think we can start. Okay, speaker number one, please go forward. Thank you, Mr. Mon Moderator. My name is Karen Davis, and I live at 509 Main Street. I'm also the attorney for the proponents of this project. I've lived in Sturbridge for, since I was eight years old, and our, it's hard to see you guys, our family has been serving this community for over 40 years. And in that time, I've seen a lot of opportunities come and a lot of opportunities go. This is not an opportunity that you want to let go of lightly. This opportunity will not come our way again if we don't vote yes tonight, we will never have this opportunity again. I want to talk a little bit about trust and fear, okay? There's been a very aggressive smear campaign against this project, and the whole platform has been based in fear and bullying. Most of what's been out there has been from out-of-towners and been anonymous. And it's very easy to say anything you want when you're anonymous. So I want to set the record straight tonight. The facts are, there will be a $12 million athletic center up at this site for our children to play at. Yeah, I'm gonna ask there will be right. no access as as for the project out. through Breakneck Road. There will be no casinos. Okay, okay. everybody, yes. What is that, sir? 
Okay, I'm sorry. I've been assailed by two people at the same time. Okay, I'm trying to answer all questions, everybody. Okay, Ms. Davis, can you tell us what you were talking about before everybody att attacked me? Yes, these are the proponents for the project for the overlay zone that's in front of you tonight. They're basically the catalyst as to why we're here and why we're voting on this overlay zone. Okay, I'm going to stop you for a second. I'll give you time to make up for this. Uh, when you have an article, obviously, you have to be careful that people speak to the issues of that article. Th usually, when you have a zoning change, it's the rezone in a, a, a area of town which you want to change how you're going to put, how close houses will be or what types of uses can be. So whether there's going to be a gas station, a convenience store, uh, a, a, a hairdressing salon, a supermarket, those all changes. So sometimes we've had in the past campaigns where people come in, they want to put a particular business in. So if somebody jumps up and says, I think it's a good idea we put this particular business in. And you, you say, well, no, there's a lot of businesses that potentially could go into that area. This case is a lot different. This overlay district is very narrow. There's only one type of business that can go in there. It's an equine-based uh, business. And I'm going to, uh, this is a legitimate, I think, uh, proposition and submittal by the proponents as to what this is all about. Uh, the, if the, they fit four square into what the definition is made uh, for what this overlay district would allow. And I think they're totally entire. We're not asking to put in gas stations in there or banks or supermarkets. We're talking about an equine proposition and an equine proposition only. So I think it's totally appropriate for them to go forward with it. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll have your four minutes. Thank you. So back to setting the record straight. Here are the facts. We talked about the athletic center. We talked about no access to breakneck. <laughs> No casinos, no slot machines, no big box retail, no hotels. This project will have a zero carbon imprint. 90% of the revenue for this project comes from sports betting, which will take place on people's mobile devices in their homes all over the state. And this project will bring in $1.3 million annually in taxes into our town. Just to put that in perspective, that's 3% of our current budget, and the current highest taxpayer in our town pays $600,000 annually. This project will be, bring $1.3 million in annually. So we've been working on this project for two years with an exceptional group of visionaries, architects, wetlands experts, <coughs> We've been reaching out to you. We've sent mailers to you. We've had public hearings. We've had met with the boards. We have been sitting in your living room talking to you about this project. We have heard you. We've listened to you. We've incorporated your concerns into this project, as well as the amenities that you asked us for. For example, in the overlay zone tonight, there is specific language that states Public access to this equine sh center shall be prohibited from Breakneck Road. That's actually in the overlay zone, okay? So we are in the middle of this process. There's an argument out there that says we should have done all of these studies by now. We are in the middle. We have done all the preliminary studies. We have vetted the site for feasibility. We have delineated our wetlands. Our wetlands experts spent six months on the property delineating the wetlands. We have done everything we are supposed to be to be here tonight. Tonight is about you saying, yes, we want you to do more. And the overlay zone is about all the protections that we have incorporated in there so you continue to have input in this project and the town has final say on everything that happens up there. So sometimes, everyone's in a She's great She's not at time yet, no. She's not at time. She gets a full four minutes from when we restarted. You have a minute 30 to go. Please continue. Sometimes. Every once in a while, an opportunity of a lifetime crosses your paths. That's our opportunity tonight. This is our opportunity to say yes to kids playing on a gorgeous brand new field. This is our opportunity to yes, we want a place for our seniors to have outdoor activities. Yes, we want a green facility and an environmentally conscious developer who is partnering with us. 
Yes, we want $1.3 million annually in our town bank account. You have everything you need to say yes. And we have three votes tonight, so please stay for all three votes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Before we go any further, before we go any further, there are uh, several recommendations that have to be made, actions that have to be taken before we can vote on this. And the first is that the planning board has to have a hearing on this and has to take some action. They don't have to approve it necessarily. Uh, you can see from your warrant they did approve it, but we have to hear whether or not they had a hearing and what their vote was. And if we could have a representative of the planning board, please tell us what that is. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charlie Blanchard, 26 Farquhar Road, Planning Board Chair. The proposal before the town this evening is to insert a new Article 21 in the zoning bylaw that will create an agricultural entertainment overlay district to allow equine centers and related and complementary uses in a location in town that will be identified in the zoning map presented in Article 49. The proposed bylaw defines the uses that may be permitted within the Agricultural Entertainment Overlay District and the standards that must be met to obtain approval for such a facility. It is important to note that this is the first step in the process. If the zoning amendment passes this evening, this will allow the proponents to move forward and make applications to the various local boards, committees, and state agencies for the required permits and licenses. Any approval tonight does not approve a particular project. The Planning Board held a public hearing on the proposed changes on September 28th, 2021. This public hearing was legally advertised and posted, and all others were notified as required. At that meeting, a motion was made by Susan Waters, seconded by Michael Chisholm, and voted six to zero to support the proposed amendments. Thank you. Uh, we also have to have, we have a little technicality here, and that is that the Finance Committee, we talked about earlier, makes the main motion. And their main motion here was to amend one small phraseology part in this. Uh, can maybe Kevin Smith or somebody from Finance explain what this is all about, your amendment? Yes, when we reviewed the article, we, we were under, we, we had concerns about the verbiage, which would be on page three, and then section B, you would see number 13, livestock and grain storage and sale. We thought it would be just cleaner to make sure that it said storage, what do we have, storage and sale of livestock and grain, so that everyone understood that they meant that they could house livestock and also sell livestock in this zone, and the same is true for grain as well. So we're just trying to clarify the wording. Okay, except for that, as I understand it, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve the article as written, am I That's correct? That's correct. Okay, so are you making a substitute motion to change that one sentence, if you will, to read the way you're, you're looking for? That's correct, okay. and then otherwise everything else stays the same. So now uh, we have a substitute motion Classic case of changing some language. Do we have a second to that? Well, well it's our recommendation. I'm sorry? It's not a substitution, it's our recommendation. Yes, well, okay, but that's, it becomes, it's different than the article, so by definition, because it's different than the article, it has to be a substitute motion. So that's why I'm asking you, is that your, is that your, your recommendation? That is our recommendation, and then I will second it. Do we have a second? Okay, having heard that, any discussion I'm not, oh, I'm not done yet, okay? You should know that that's what we're gonna be acting on with that minor change in that language in that sentence from section 13, uh, B13, as it's listed. Now the recommendation of the, they were voted on that 7 0 and one seven in favor, zero against, one took an abstention. The recommendation of the board of selectmen, and you should know this, is three in favor, two against. It's important to know how your various town boards uh, react to these and what their thinking is. The, these people came to you, asked to be elected selectmen, and you should pay attention to what their recommendations are. They have a lot of knowledge about town affairs, hopefully. Okay, now we have one speaker there. We had a speaker up top, do we still have him? Is he still there? Yeah, there he is, okay. 
Nice and loud, tell us what you want to say, sir. Carl Kirkland from the 39 Hillside Drive, Sturbridge. And I would like to speak to the concern I have that some of the voters here this evening may be unduly influenced by the quite vitriolic uh, claims, some of them misinformed, uh, relating to the apparently abusive nature of horse racing. Well, okay. Um, we talked about what we could talk about uh, when Selectman asked the question whether or not this is appropriate. The problem is, is that this is a land use development. It's under zoning. Uh, we may not like horse racing or we may love horse racing. We may not like Kino cards or we may love Kino cards. We may like scratch cards or we may love, not like scratch cards. We may like alcohol or dislike alcohol. We may like cigarettes or dislike cigarettes. The point being is that, I, I have the floor, thank you. I'm still a moderator, okay? The point being is that this is a land use development. The value or the no value of gambling is not the issue here. It's a question of whether or not we want to make this land use change. So if you want to go forward from there, we're not going to tolerate a big discussion of whether gambling is a good thing or a bad thing. Our Commonwealth of Massachusetts has approved of gambling, and it's probably the biggest gambling establishment around, no question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So the approach I would take is that I think it's important that our town tonight consider the questions that you're asking here, for asking us to vote on, without undue influence from preconceived notions regarding abusive racehorses, which is just a very small part. The racing part of this initiative is just a very small part of the overall development. Uh, I can tell you that as a, as a horse owner, as an equine veterinarian, as a professor of surgery at Tufts Veterinary School, as someone who has had racehorses in our family for some time, as an e expert in orthopedic injury in horses and in humans, uh, for all of these reasons, I think I'm well positioned to say that I understand the medical aspect of it, the business aspect of it, the humane and the ethical aspect of it. Okay, uh, sir, I want to stop you again. This is not an animal husbandry issue. It's not a Board of Health issue. This is a land use issue. So whether you think horse, horses are treated uh, especially to the good or especially to the bad is not the issue tonight. So we're not going to go into a discussion of whether animal husbandry, uh, that racehorses are treated well or not treated well. It's not the issue. The issue is should this piece of land be re rezoned with this overlay district? That's what this is about. Not whether horses are treated well or not. Leave Thank that you, to sir. the Board of Health or whatever other enforcement agencies there are, the State Racing Commission, whoever it is that enforces this. Do you have any other points, sir? Yes, I think I can frame this by saying that this land use needs to be for an entertainment complex which has no association with or risk of injury to the participants, be they human or equine. And for that reason, I would like to state very clearly that the risk of injury to animals participating in this. Okay. Sir, you want to finish this up and get off to the injury to horses, please? Very good. I will ask the attendees tonight to please use their best judgment to recognize that all sports, human entertainment, animal entertainment involvement, risk injury, and I would hope that you would appreciate that there are many of us here who have the training and have mitigated that injury and will continue to work hard to do so. Thank sir, you, sir. you don't get the point. Thank you. you made your point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mr. Goodwin, we're going to call on you as a chairman on the board. You don't have to come down here. Now, that's microphone two. Do we have a speaker at microphone three? And uh, there's is any other, well, we're waiting for, anyone speaker at microphone two wants to come up now? from the balcony. Anyone else want to come up? Wait your turn, we'll get around to you. Again, somebody from microphone one down here, somebody else wants to speak? Yes, ma'am. Second row, around the corner of the chart here. Okay. Just yes, thank you. To hold on, just oh. go, let's get everybody get sorted out. Uh. So we got one, we got three, and your number, I'm number two, you're number three, please go forward. Please start. Oh, all right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Manisha Sinha, and I live in 20 Whittemore Road in Sturbridge. My husband and I have lived here for over 30 years. We love this town. We are very committed 
to its prosperity, to its well-being, but I'm extremely concerned by the way in which this so-called equine center is being pushed down our throats. I feel that the first speaker was not entirely clear in not having any of these uh, reports on environmental impacts, wetlands, our traffic impacts, tra uh, impact on the quality of life in our town. None of that has been really apparent to us. We have received an enormous amount of um, literature from this racetrack company uh, and people supporting it. Um, but it didn't seem to me that they have done due diligence in looking at the extremely deleterious effects that this center will have on our lives. Um, the good professor here has talked about uh, how horses are well treated in, in race racing, and I, I, I beg to differ. But this question is one of zoning. And I really think for Sturbridge, we need to think about supporting businesses and development that are sustainable and that look to the future. This kind of business does not look to the future. It's a dying one. It is one that has been rejected by many towns. And I don't like the way in which it is being shoved down our throats. I really think it is important for us as residents, and I love the idea of the New England town democracy that allows us, ordinary citizens and residents of this town, that love this town, that are completely devoted to its well-being, not, in fact, to be given a poison pill by telling us that, yes, this is going to get us millions of dollars. I have seen too many of these kind of rosy promises that never pan out, and this kind of business is not it. Horse racing is not horse breeding. It's not a innocuous agricultural equine center. Let's be very clear that this will encourage gambling, will create an environment that might actually affect our property values, increase crime, increase traffic. We're still counting. She's still in four minutes. I've got a timer going. Don't trust Thank me. You. Thank you so much. And do give me that one second for the time. Um, it will have these deleterious effect, effects on us. I have two young sons who have grown up in this town, and I have longed for soccer fields, for good sports fields in our town. I know that that is a crying issue, but this is not the way that I want it. I do not want to destroy our town uh, with this kind of business. I am not anti-development. I am not anti-business. I want the kind of development in Sturbridge that will serve all its residents and will be a long-term sustainable business proposition. Rezoning our wetlands for this project is really, I think, an environmental disaster, one that is built on animal abuse, and one that will have an extremely harmful effect on all of us as homeowners and as residents You're of this town. Time. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McDonald, we need another speaker for uh, microphone number three. So if we have somebody come over, that would be appreciated. We'll go back to now microphone number one. And if you could tell us your name, please. Hello, my name is Sophie Lennon. I'm a resident of 76 Breakneck Road. And I think I speak on behalf of the majority of Breakneck Road that I'm encouraging Sturbridge to vote no on the rezoning of the property. Breakneck Road is a residential area and it is a dead end. And yes, they are claiming that there is going to be no access via Breakneck Road to the equestrian center. Per the HCA agreement, that is only for equestrian events. That does not include festivals, concerts, Boy Scout and Girl Scout events, any kind of thing like that. There has been no traffic study done. There's, no, there's been no environmental impact study done. Breakneck Road is a well water community. We don't know if this is going to contaminate our well water, our drinking water. Please consider the facts. Think about the residents of Breakneck Road and how detrimental this is going to be to us. Breakneck Road is a thin to barely two lane road. Thank you. Thank you. I need another speaker for microphone number one. Any takers? 
Microphone one. Do I see? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Come on up and stand by. We'll get around to you. Okay, we are now microphone number two. And do we have a speaker? Joanna Shapiro, 50 Westwood Drive. I want to respond to some of the comments made by the attorney representing the proponent for the project um, since that can of worm has been opened. Um, and I want to finish some of, some of the sentence that sentences that she started and didn't finish. I want to be clear, the only opportunity that we as residents have to vote on this issue is tonight on this zoning bylaw. She said that was the beginning of the process. For residents, that's the end. That's the last chance you have to have a voice on this to slow this train down. The zoning bylaw doesn't require that any of those promises that they've been speaking of will be kept. They promise access from 84 only, but the zoning bylaw only limits public access from breakneck to the racetrack and sports bar and does not limit any private access like employees, large delivery vehicles, construction access. Read the bylaw in your warrant packet. I can reference section 300-21.4G. It specifically allows access from breakneck to many other areas of the site, including the recreational fields, wastewater detention facilities, and much more. There's also no requirement in the zoning bylaw that a new exit be constructed to provide access from 84. The zoning bylaw also only specifies a minimum number of races, not a maximum. More promises made that this zoning bylaw doesn't protect us from. The developer promises a retirement home from, for horses, but nothing of this nature is even listed as an allowed use in the zone, let alone as a requirement. A retirement home also isn't a rescue. You pay to board horses at a horse retirement home, just like many farms in town already do. It's nothing special. The developer promises town recreational fields, but that's not a required use either in the overlay zone. It, if it's determined that the fields can't be put on that area, then they're going to give $3 million, which won't even pay for one field. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Uh, the developer's promises are not included in the document that we get to vote on tonight. They say these promises will be included in a host community agreement, but that, as the town council confirmed, is a simple contract that the Board of Selectmen and developer can amend any time without any input from us residents. When the developer needs to back off of those promises later, they need more races, or any, or they can't get a highway access, all they need is three, three sympathetic Board of Selectmen members to go along with whatever they want, because they want this in town, they want dollars, even though we're selling ourselves short with the percentages offered. Lastly, we should only be voting for a, vote, a zoning change if we feel as though the use itself is beneficial to the town, not because of promises made by the potential developer to entice us. Once we change the zoning, any applicant can take advantage. Carrots may work on horses, but I hope they don't on our residents. This is a permanent zone change, and we need the facts, studies, and adequate zoning language first in order to make an informed decision and protect the town's interests. Thank you. I urge you to vote no on this very flawed proposal. Thank you. Okay, speaker number two. I'm oh, number three, I'm sorry. Yes, Mark Vincent Sr. from 19 Bates Hill. I used to draw our teas and drink a lot of walls. I got a question. Environmental impact studies take seven years. Why are they cleaning it down our throats in two? Okay, this is not a popularity contest. We're not going to react. That's the first thing. Environmental laws in this town have been broken time and time again. They're scaring people with private wells, making cocoa into town sewage and drinking water. So someone's got to take a stand about issues, environmental issues, drinking water issues. They are governing our health, our grandkids' health, and our e the, the whole ecosystem of this town. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Now hold on. Can we get another speaker for number number three up there? Are you the speaker, sir? Number two. Number two. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We're getting to you. We're gonna. We finished one, two, and three. I'm going to check with our board of selectmen and our finance committee. We have, I think, Mr. Goodwin had his hand up before. We'll give him a, a chance at it. And then Ms. Dowling, if she wants to speak. Use your microphone, please. 
Can, can everybody hear me? So I, first of all, just as a point of parliamentary process, I'm confused. Either we're talking about the zoning overlay or we're talking about all of it. This middle ground doesn't make any sense to me. But regardless, please, please vote no uh, on this racetrack overlay. Despite the, uh, the representations by Attorney Davis, we have not been provided sufficient information uh, to make an informed decision on this uh, bylaw. We should have already received a traffic study, a noise study, environmental, a variety of environmental studies, and an actual explanation, an actual explanation on how they're going to access this property from I-84. The numbers that you heard tonight, they're not based in any reality. Even our own economists had a 30 to 40 percent swing on this. This is not substantive. It is a vision board. And it's unacceptable, and it's not how we should be doing business and service. This process got going for real in August, and they did an end run. And this whole process has not been uh, based in empirical data, um, actual transparency. It's a whole host of representations that uh, the numbers that even listed tonight, they're not based in anything that I can see. And it's unacceptable, and this is not how we should be doing business in Sturbridge. We deserve better, just as we said that our seniors deserve better, our taxpayers deserve better, because we don't know what this will actually cost us. So with that, I, I will turn this over to Ms. Dowling. Thank you all for coming tonight, regardless of whether or not you agree with me. Okay, let's keep this under control. Yes. That's what we said. Yes, Ms. Dowling. Oh, sorry. Mary Dowling. At this very core, this bylaw is about, there's a lot of carrots, but it's about a racetrack, it's about simulcast racing all year long, it's about sports betting, and it's about sports book, online sports betting. First and foremost, sports betting isn't even legal yet in Massachusetts, and we're actually passing a bylaw legalizing it at the local level before the state has even done it. The House of Representatives passed it in the summer, it's sitting in the Senate. On J January 4th, they're going to adjourn. And this happened last year. I can't even believe the Attorney General is going to uphold parts of this bylaw. Number two, the horse racing industry has been looking for a town ever since Suffolk Downs closed in 2019. They've been looking all over the state because they want to resurrect horse racing. And that speaker was correct that it's an archaic dying industry to the point where it's the casino money, the tax money, that pays for the races. There is $20.5 million, yes, $20.5 million sitting in the Race Horse Development Fund to get thoroughbred racing going again. The state is going to pay it. So if you actually think we're only going to have 10 races a year when $20 million is sitting there to pay the purses, you have the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association pushing hard to bring racing back. You have the New England Horsemen Protective Association. Let me give you a quote when they talked about bringing back horse racing in the Telegram Gazette. The president said, what, it, what we need is a thoroughbred racetrack with live meat 80 to 100 days of the year. When they tried to go to Rowling, they were going to have 60 days of races, May through October. Plainville has 68 days of races at Thomas Racing. When these proponents came to us, one of them, two years ago to the Board of Selectmen, it was going to be six weeks of racing twice a year in the spring and the summer. And you can look at the video. And I inquired, would you hold yourself to that? And he said, well, I don't know if I can. Now, two years later, it's 10 days of racing. That is a fluid number. Every year, a race course owner has to go before the Gaming Commission with their license. It's a renewal license every year, and they state that they need so many race days that year. Mark my words, how would we possibly stay at 12 races a year when there's $20 million waiting in the coffers of the state to pay for them? They will come back to the Board of Selectmen and request that the host agreement be changed, just as annually they get their license. So get ready for a lot of traffic in the future. Is it going to happen right away? No. But the horse racing industry wants to resurrect horse racing, and they're going to get to big numbers because that's what's in the papers. That's their goal. And right now, this project has those two associations backing. <laughs> Why are they backing it? Are they backing it for 12 races a year? 
when they've got $20 million, know what you're getting into. There are carrots, but there's also going to be a price to pay. And I can't believe with sports betting not legal, we're actually trying to pass the bylaw. I cannot believe it. And we're asked to sign a host agreement when not, none of the studies have been done. How can we as a board make intelligent decisions about mitigation, mitigating the expense, the adverse impacts to the traffic, to the noise, to the impact on the quality of life of that neighborhood when we don't have these studies? How can we be intelligent in this? Please vote no. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm calling the speaker, speaker number one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Reed Hillman, 57, Bushnell Road, Sturbridge. I want to apologize for those of you that I scared when you opened your mailbox. Uh, that is my picture. They told me when they said I was going to be surprised by a mailer. I was really surprised to see my own photo. I figured it would be someone uh, young and attractive, <laughs> and I was wrong on both counts. Uh, so. My roots in Sturbridge go back to 1974 when I was first assigned here as a trooper. My wife's go back to the 1960s. I met my wife here. I married my wife here. I raised my children here. I'm watching my, ch my grandchildren get raised here too. I volunteered for numerous boards and commissions, and you were all kind enough to send me to the legislature for three terms to represent you. My wife, Therese, as many of you know firsthand, taught third grade in this town for almost 30 years. We're very proud to be residents of this town. We love this town, and we only want what's best for this town. I'm proud to stand in front of you right now and say that I have agreed to become the chair of the Sturbridge Oversight Committee, which is the governing board of the proposed Sturbridge Agricultural and Equestrian Center. This project, in my opinion, is quintessential Sturbridge. This is not your grandparents' racetrack. It's going to be safe, honest, green, family-friendly, and a huge economic boon to this entire area. Being conceived, designed, and operated by horse enthusiasts is what attracted me to this project. My wife and I own a small horse farm. We've had horses for decades. We love our horses. Having horses has been a great opportunity for our kids to get to care for them, to get to ride them. And with this equestrian center, every child in Sturbridge will have that same opportunity, not to mention the trails that will be created and the new athletic fields. Now, I served on this finance committee, how long ago, Kevin? 24 years ago. And what we heard then from parents was, we need athletic fields for our kids. Well, guess what we still do, and this is the way to get them, by voting yes on this project. As a former public safety official, I can assure you that the center will be one of the safest crime-free establishments anywhere. We will have a substation for police and fire, our own security force, and we will continue to work closely with our area public safety officials. This track like Saratoga will be a place you will be proud to bring your children to all year round. I wanted to be part of this project really for two reasons. One, to make sure that the Senate keeps its promise to the citizens of Sturbridge, and that it's the best neighbor, the best resident, the best business that any town would wish to have. And two, that this center treats its horses with affection, with care, and these horses are the best cared and best treated horses anywhere. It's this town and that breed that matters so much to me and my family. Please join my wife and I in voting yes for this overlay. Building a horse facility that's quintessentially Sturbridge and bring the excitement of horse racing back to our town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have another volunteer to take the place of speaker one? Yes, sir. And we're gonna go on to speaker number two up there. Yes, sir. Eric Please Gaspar for Deer Run Circle. Um, first, on, on behalf of myself and the many honorable members of our community, I, I would like to issue an apology 
for the treatment that Tom Chamberlain, Mary and Charlie Blanchard, Chase uh, Kabinsky, and many other members of this community who have been uh, out and working e either in favor of this project or just been doing their work as public servants for the town of Sur Sturbridge that they've done for so many years and the mud smearing campaign that have been rained down on them. I've been disgusted by the attitude of this community. Let's stay on point, Mr. Gaffney. I do, I do have a procedural question. I know that's probably going to shock you, Mr. Moderator. Um, and uh, I, I'm just curious, what is the legal process for the potential recalling of a warrant question after the vote has been recorded before adjournment? I bring this up because a mailer that I received at my house, and I imagine every other resident of Sturbridge received at their house, that came from the opponents of this warrant uh, stated, and I quote, it ain't over till it's over, folks. Stay until the whole town meeting has been adjourned. So I am concerned that there's going to be some procedural maneuvering going on behind the scenes after this vote, if it does go to the, uh, the affirmative, that, that the members of the audience should be aware of. So if I could get uh, an explanation of what that process looks like, please. Okay. Um, I think that there's been a great deal of discussion about possibility of uh, recall or reconsideration, actually is what it's referred to, or rescission is how it's referred to. Uh, we have adopted here in Sturbridge, I'm going to answer this question because it's come up a couple of times tonight and I think it's one that we should answer. We have adopted years ago a book called Town Meeting Time, and that's the parliamentary procedure guidebook for, uh, for us here. Robert's Rules of Order is to supplement it, and that's supplemented by uh, supposedly my own good common sense, whatever that may be. But having said that, our tradition in my 20 odd years uh, it's, tw it's 20 and a half of years being moderator, is on motions for reconsideration is this. If the, par if the party who's just seeking it has a valid reason, and one I could think of that we did a few years ago was we had an article where it was to buy two or three items and the total that we're gonna expend wasn't enough if you added it up. It was like to buy three things for 200,000 and the total the mathematical mistake was 400,000. So we didn't have enough money. So we went back later on and we reconsidered it and said, gee, it shouldn't be 400, it should be 600. And I'm, don't use those as exact numbers, but that's what the situation was. We have a tradition here, certainly during my administration as moderator, that we do not accept uh, motions for reconsideration unless they have a valid, substantial reason. And it doesn't have to be the one I just gave you, but something similar to that. The mere fact that you look around and you figure that all the people that voted for it, the way it went the first time, just left. Here's my chance, oh boy, I'm gonna jump on a reconsideration. It's not gonna be accepted by this moderator. Not gonna be accepted. There are towns, this Sturbridge is not one of them, that have very specific bylaws about when you can file motions for reconsideration and the terms and conditions that you have to do. Now, Sturbridge has no bylaw. We have none, zero on this. So it's been up to the a practice that we've had, and the practice for 20 and a half years that I've been moderator has been just what I told you. So, unless we have some very valid reason that's presented on this article or any other article that comes before the town, why it should be reconsidered, this moderator is not going to accept it. Now, can I be any clearer on that? No, I appreciate that. I just have uh, one follow-up question to the five members of the select board. Uh, I'd just be interested, yes or no, to the individuals on the select board, and I'll start with, with you, Mary Blanchard. Thank you for your service to the town. Okay, why don't we just have Would the, you? We would, vote, excuse me, Mr. Gaspar. Excuse me. We have the vote already that's been taken. It was three to two, the board of selectmen, and I think I can be fair and tell you that Mr. Dunnigan, Mr. Kabinsky, and Mary Blanchard voted for this article. Mr. Uh, Goodwin and Ms. Dowling voted against it. Well, I, know, I know who voted for who. I'm just curious, would they support any political maneuvering such like that? I would like to hear from our elected officials whether or not they would support somebody making a maneuver like that. What is like yes that? Yes or no? Talking about, Mr. No, Eric. No, I, don't think, I don't think anybody on the board would. Uh, Chase. And, but thank you for your kind words before. Chase? No, I would not, Eric. Thank you. Mary? I don't support political maneuvering of any sort, but I will also say 
both sides, off sides, with respect to some of the comments that have been out there. I'm not on social media, but okay. I think it's really awful and Mary, no specific. political maneuvering Mary, on either Mary, side. Mary, you asked a specific question to answer that. Thank you. Ian, thank you. I voted to send this to a vote tonight so that everybody could have a say. Once the say has been said, it's over, and that's the end of it. Thank you. And Jamie? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You've exceeded your four minutes. Thank you. Now, speaker number three. Do you have another speaker for number two lined up? Do you have somebody up there that wants to speak, has not spoken yet? You got your hand up, sir? Okay, wait your turn. Number three, yes, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my I name can't is hear you. Carsten Stuber from 20 Whitmore Road. Uh, okay. I'm just well, wanting to that. point out that and second some of the comments that were made against the motion, uh, that there really are no carrots in this project. There is could you speak into the microphone, please? I'm having a hard time. There really are no carrots. Can you hear me now? Yes, good. There are no carrots in this project. There are promises, empty promises, and the flyers that were sent out were promising us paradise on earth, happy seniors walking around, children playing on, uh, on playgrounds. Uh, now, if God would promise me paradise on earth, I would believe him because God is supposedly all good. The problem that I have is that nothing that we will vote on binds the developer contractually to build any of these fields that they promise. Now, in my view, contracts without swords, that is words, that cannot be enforced are empty words. And I also don't tend to believe paradise on earth promised by somebody who's not God and makes his money in gambling. Normally, I would think that might not be all good. So I would urge you not to vote for this change in the bylaws, but vote no, because there really are no Carrots, empty promises, mere words that mean absolutely nothing, pie in the sky. Let's vote no. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're coming around the circle again. We're going to, we're going to uh, the Finance Committee, I believe, Chairman, who I can't see from where I'm sitting, I'm told is very anxiously wants to speak. We're going to allow the government officials, if we will, to speak in their turn. Right. Okay. Yeah, is this working? Okay. So I just wanted to represent where the Finance Committee is coming in on this. Right now, this article, if adopted, is just the beginning of a process for any, or any project that would come in under it. It would make no financial sense for any developer to undertake any of the studies and the cost for those studies to know if this project is feasible unless this article is in place that says, yes, we would accept this type of project in this town. And then, once the project enters the process, all the studies are going to be done because it's part of the process. And it, you know, it's weighed out in here, and it's weighed out in all the development articles we have. It goes through the planning board. The host community agreement is a contract between the developer and the town. It has performance guarantees as well as penalty clauses for nonconformance to the HCA, or excuse me, the host community agreement. And it is the responsibility of the elected, your elected representatives on the Board of Selectmen to hold any developer accountable to those terms of the host community agreement. So someone mentioned that before. You're right. It could change if a majority of the Board of Selectmen agree with a developer to change the terms. But it is a contract, and the terms are laid out, and the HCA is available for people to review. And I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to keep one more government official, then we'll go back to the, to the voters. Mrs. Blanchard. Good. Okay, thank you. I voted in favor of this. I do believe it's an opportunity for the town, and I do have faith in people that the town negotiates with. Will everything be perfect? Probably not. Will everything be awful? Definitely not. But part of the procedure, if you even listen to the chairman of the planning board, it is unreasonable to have a proponent spend millions and millions of dollars on all these studies if they don't know if they can 
have the uh, overlay district. All those studies will come with all the different boards. And trust me, the boards in this town do their diligent work in making sure that the towns <coughs> get the best projects possible. There will be environmental studies, traffic studies, all the different studies that are needed. So please have faith in the boards and vote yes on the overlay district. Thank you. Okay, um, speaker number one. Hi, I'm Bill Bridges, Ray Downey Road, um, lifelong Sturbridge resident, actually fourth generation Sturbridge resident. I, like many of you here today, are living here because we decide to live here. We love the town, we decide to raise our kids here. I'm here to speak on behalf of the family that owns the land in question, the Pompeon family. My wife's family owns that property. There are also fourth generation Sturbridge residents and Sturbridge taxpayers. They've owned over the years over 2,000 acres in this town. Back in the 70s and 80s, they took 1,000 acres of that property, built a campground, which is now on Bench Park Road. They managed it. They've kept it open space. They sold it back in the 80s to outdoor world. It still remains a campground. In the 90s, they took 1,000 acres adjacent to this property and sold it to the state for pennies on the dollar to leave it as open space. This property in question now is the last bit of, of property that's left owned by the family. We are in a situation now where the property was originally owned by seven brothers. Unfortunately, six have passed. There's only one remaining. So we're in the possession, position of we have to sit, sell the property. Just like many of you, when you can't keep living in your family, we cannot do it. Okay? So this project being uh, presented here in front of you now, you have to consider more than just this project. The, town, the uh, land currently is zoned residential, so if this project does not pass, we will be selling the land to a developer to build the only thing that is zoned for, and that's either single family homes or townhouses. We have plans in our hands for two different projects. Now we stayed out of this discussion for quite a long time. We found a, a lot of negative comments, and like everything, most of it was false. We had to jump in, and what we did is on Monday, we presented a, a letter to the Board of Selectmen, so it is real, we presented it to them so people would know it comes from the family. We also posted it on Facebook, and if anybody you have negative comments to, that you posted on there, I didn't see them because I'm not a Facebook guy, we posted it and shut it down and moved on. All right. We wish we were in this position, but we are. I think the family has done their due diligence in their duty to this town by leaving almost 2,000 acres open. When this lane was, uh, when 84 was being built, a good portion of this, this lane was taken over by eminent domain by the state as well. We're outdoor people, we love the outdoors, we want to keep as much open space as we can. The two proposals I told you about, like I said, we have in hand, and we posted that letter on the site just so you people are aware of what is going to happen if this doesn't go through, okay? Our hands are tied. We will be selling it to a developer. We have no other option. There's a couple of things I can promise you that will happen with that development. There will not be ball fans in town. All right, I've been in town, played ball in the 60s. There's been one athletic field built since I've been in town. The town's quadrupled in population. So there will not be ball fields. There will not be any community gardens. There will not be 2.3 miles of walking trails. There will not be activities for seniors. And one thing I can guarantee you there won't be is an exit to 84. The address of this property is 180 Breakneck Road, okay? It's not 180 exit Route 84. It's Breakneck Road, okay? So, I understand the people from Big Micro, but I understand that. We're saying, saying this so when this project, these projects do come up, you are aware. Okay, you should have been aware when you, you know, when you buy that property, you have to understand the work is continuing. The two projects in hand will also probably have some sort of affordable housing, which will... Mr. Griffin, you're running short on time, so wrap it up. Okay, go ahead. 
So when you do make your uh, vote tonight, I just want to make sure you understand that you're not just voting for an overall district or, or to bring this type of project to town. You're also voting against putting more housing developments in town. So I urge you to vote this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we need another speaker first. Number one, do we have somebody who wants to come down here and wait? Just... Okay, yes, the young lady, you go on down and speaker number three. Yes, sir, go ahead. I don't like. Um, I live on Breakneck Road, and to be honest with you, I you Please there... identify yourself. Oh, John Cashmanian, Breakneck Road. I lived there for 30 years, okay? I've heard nothing about a study regarding the water. Um, extra traffic, there's a multitude of exceptions and exemptions from that. You know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, fairs, concerts, all sorts of things that are on here. In order to do that, you're going to have to modify that road. If you modify that road, there will be houses that the, the road will be in, inside their living room. Or there will be other houses where you wouldn't be able to get up their driveway or down their driveway. All right? And I haven't heard anything about that. And I know a lot of the neighbors that I've talked to feel like this is, we're kind of like a sacrificial lamb here. And I really haven't heard anybody convince me that at this particular stage, without the proper studies, that this is the right thing to do. And as Mr. Pomprian just pointed out that that land is on Breakneck Road, they, would st they still wouldn't be using the amount of water that this facility is going to use. Horses take a lot of water, gardens take water, fields take water. They're going to have gigantic wells consuming tons of water that all the folks on that road are on well water. I'd just like to know, what's, what's the recourse if all of our wells run dry? You know, I haven't heard anybody answer that. I haven't, um, I don't know that it's been discussed. And maybe someone could enlighten us. Oh, Dr. Kashmini, are you asking a question that you want answered? Or? I'm, I'm asking both. I'm just saying it's going to affect people, and I, and I don't know 100% that it's going to be adverse, but you're talking about passing something when a simple study for just that surrounding area has not been made. Okay, can maybe somebody can answer quickly. Do we have a water study that's done? Ms. Davis, I know you spoke, but maybe if you can quickly, 10 seconds or less, answer this, no. it'd be great. Thank you, I'm the moderator, I'll run the meeting, thank you. So all of the studies that you're talking about, as um, Chairman Blanchard just said, all of those studies will be done, will be vetted by the town, and if there are issues okay. that come up... Ms. Davis, the answer is no, there aren't any studies. Oh, that was... Thank okay, you. Sorry. That's all we need. Thank you. Okay. I'm all, that's all. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Cashmanian. Okay, I, I kind of screwed this up. I didn't do number two. Let's do number two. Jeff Shapiro, 50 Westwood Drive. First of all, I just wanted to throw out there uh, what Mary Blanchard just said about uh, all this, the studies being done after the fact. The proponents have quite a bit of money to spend, so there's zero reason for them not to have done their studies ahead of time. Secondly, I want it to be known that these are my thoughts and they do not reflect the, view, the viewpoints of the Recreation Committee colleagues. I am on the Recreation Committee, for those who don't know. My views are not intended to be disparaging towards anyone. At our August 18th Recreation Meeting, which was specially scheduled at the last minute, mind you, so that we could meet the equestrian proponents, they began the meeting by telling us, quote, well, I won't say quote because I don't wanna throw myself under the bus like that, but very much so, they pretty much said, we want your support for this project, followed by, we want to know what amenities you would like to see on this property. Just like that. The floodgates were opened. Our committee was blown away by the potential of recreation activities on the site. While I made it clear during the questioning that I was not in favor of horse racing, in the end, we voted unanimously to support the project. My affirmative vote rested solely on the prospect of recreational, recreation aspects. We didn't discuss much else. Since that day, I've done my research. And along with the lack of concrete answers being offered, if I had my vote back, I would have voted differently. 
I am not anti-fields. I believe that we certainly, we could certainly use new fields, but not in such close proximity to a facility like this and not to the detriment of our town. I am not anti-business. In fact, I want new businesses in town, but they need to be the right type of businesses. This is not the right type of business. I can echo that just like everyone else before. When I moved to this beautiful town, I never thought we would be in this situation contemplating a racetrack in our town. I have heard the word quintessential thrown around quite a bit recently describing this project. Horse racing is an outdated sport, and quite honestly, I've never considered gambling to be a quintess quintessential to Sturbridge. I have been quiet all along, and I hope by voicing my opinion, other town officials and citizens alike will do the same. I'm interested in changing my vote, and I hope that with a clear conscience, you too will vote against this proposed bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, need another speaker for number three. And you just perspective, you're number three, correct, sir? Yep. Okay, hold on. We have this young lady, we have a gentleman sitting to her right. Now, what is his function? Okay. Okay, well, let's see. Why don't you go forward? Okay, let's, let's, hold on. Why don't you take a seat? We're trying to rotate here. Do we have a selectman or a finance committee wants to speak? Mr. Kabinsky, did you have your hand up? My wife is going to be very upset for cutting her off just now. Chase Kavinsky, 462 Leadmine Road. For the last year and a half, I have been studying this project. The proponents have met with virtually every board in the community. They're exactly where they should be, which is here tonight. I have thoroughly read through these documents, and I have listened to all of the presentations. And this is a great project for Sturbridge. I urge everyone to vote in favor. The positive economic impact that this will have on our community is like nothing we have ever seen. The, this project is going to generate 1.3 million in new annual revenue. People coming to this center will stay in our hotels, eat at our restaurants, and shop in our stores. Since I have been on the Board of Selectmen, I have heard from many young families regarding our fields. This is our chance to receive four state-of-the-art athletic fields for our kids. These fields will be equipped with concessions and facilities for families. This will answer the problem we have had for years. Three times a year in the summer, when traffic is heavy, the Brimfield Flea Market comes to town. Sturbridge gets nothing. Charlton is currently in the beginning of stages of building an Amazon facility, which Sturbridge will get nothing. This is our chance to get something with minimal impact on our town. Lastly, I want to say how thorough we are being with the host community agreement. We are crossing every T and dotting every I with multiple attorneys. And when it is certified, I will be the first to put my name on it. Please support this project. Thank you. Okay, you see where we are? We have a backup for three. Do we have a backup for two up there? We have somebody who wants to talk? We're not ready for you yet, but just get in line. We'll let this young lady speak, number one. Um, sorry, you guys hear me? Uh, my name is Samantha Gabinski, 462 Leadmine Road. I wanted to talk to everyone. Okay, you're going to have to speak closer to the microphone because we can't hear you. Is this better? Much better, <laughs> thank you. Okay. I wanted to speak to all of you tonight about the potential benefits that this agricultural center could have for our children. It's no secret that the pandemic has cost our kids years of their precious childhood. I'm a mother of two young boys, ages six and seven. They're in first and second grade, and they have yet to experience, experience excuse me, a sense of normalcy in school. It is imperative that we give our, son, our kids something to look forward to. We cannot predict the, the social emotional effects that this pandemic has had on our children. Currently, there are two playgrounds in town, at the Rec and at Burgess. It's no secret that the fields in town don't need a little work. They can't hear. They need a lot of work. Ma'am, could you hold on? We're having an audio problem next door. They can't hear. So we need Aaron. Is Aaron still here? Okay, we're going to have to get somebody over there so they can hear it. 
So we have to pause until we get the, hold your thought right there. We'll get, we'll get back to it. We can't do anything until we're on this meeting until we get uh, sound over there. So everybody just relax. Stay on zoning, yeah, as opposed to sound, I suppose. I can't talk to two rooms at once, ladies and gentlemen. I'm good at this, but not that good. Well, let's, let's just let's give this a minute. Maybe this is the time. I don't want to take it in the middle of an article unless we absolutely have to. Where did Lingo? Did Lingo over there to check on this? Yeah. Her and Jeremy. Okay, we're running a test to see if they can hear us. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Somebody's holding a finger up. Okay, we have sound. <clears throat> okay, let's get, get let's back to uh, where we were. Now, this young lady, I'm going to start her over. If she's not, she and Mr. Briere aren't too busy, maybe we can get back to the microphone. <clears throat> well, I'm going to start you over four minutes because whatever you had, we lost. Don't worry, I won't start from the beginning, I promise. All right. All right. Oh, okay. All right. I wanted to speak to you all tonight about the potential benefits that this agricultural center could have for our children. It's no secret that the pandemic has cost our kids years of their precious childhood. I'm a mother of two boys, ages six and seven. They're in first and second grade, and they have yet to experience normalcy in school. No one can predict the negative social emotional impact this could have on our children. It is imperative that we give our kids something to look forward to in the future, as so much has been taken from them these past two years. Currently, there are two playgrounds in town, the Rec and Burgess. It's no secret that the fields need work. The, I, they're in a bad location. You get bit by mosquitoes and ticks when you go there. We get that. Other towns have threatened not to bring their, their teams me. to play sports. Ma'am, please stop. She has the floor. Please let her speak. I'm speaking to you tonight not just as a resident, but as a mom. I don't want to talk about 10 race days a year. I want to talk to you about the other 355 days where there will be opportunity for the kids in town to learn about agriculture, to learn about animals, to learn how to treat and care for animals properly, and to advocate for them. The Agricultural Center is also going to offer classes on how to farm, where kids could potentially leave the classroom and learn these skills hands on. These things alone will build such strong character in our kids to which we would be so fortunate to have the opportunity for all the children in the community to have access to. My niece takes horse riding lessons, and she learns not only how to ride, but how to care for the horse. This little seven-year-old girl taking pride and a real interest in these animals is something really fantastic to see. 
This facility is going to give other children in the community the opportunity to find an interest in something they may not have even thought of before. And we will get a, our state-of-the-art ball fields in a beautiful facility. So as a mother, it's a no-brainer. I ask tonight that you keep an open mind for the sake of our children who have literally lost so much time to just be kids in the past couple years. I'm calling all you mama bears, dads, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, neighbors, and friends to please really think about our children and support this project, which is going to offer so many opportunities for them that other communities can't. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. My name is Samantha Kabinski. I live at 462 Lead Mine Road, and I 100% support the Sturbridge Agricultural and Equine Center, and I ask that you vote yes on all three articles tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Breer, we'd love to have you sit here. You can relax. You're going to wait your turn as we come around, okay? That work? Just for you, boss. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Somebody says I'm the boss. That's great. I love it. Okay, we have a speaker up here. Jim Zanastowski, 127 Washington Road. Uh, a pertinent point, I came up at the planning committee meeting September 14th of this year. Uh, that may not have gotten attention, but a statement was made by a member of the, the proponent team that if there's no interchange, there will be no project. We're being asked to commit to a zoning change, and they've said categorically, no interchange, no project. If you look at the fed federal and state regulations, transportation uh, regulations, uh, it's dubious that that interchange will be approved. One uh, point four of whatever, the eight criteria, one is that must the interchange must exit onto a public road. This would be exiting onto a private driveway into a private property. Another comment in the federal and state regulations is that any new interchange will serve the intended purpose of the interstate highway, not the interest of the local community. So you may be committing to a zoning change and uh, a no project. Thank you, sir. For the candy by mouth. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. We are at speaker number three, and I've heard some people in the audience attempting to make a motion. Now, if they want to make a motion, I think I heard to move the question, I will allow the speaker uh, rotation to be interrupted for that. But I need somebody to come up. If there's somebody down here, come to microphone one. If it's somebody from the uh, cafeteria, microphone three. And I already got somebody running up here. Okay. Robert, can, you, can you please identify yourself? Robert George, 14 Wildwood Lane. Move the question. Okay. Is there a second to that? I think there's a second. Okay. Under, Matt, under uh, uh, town meeting time uh, pro procedures, we have no discussion of this. Okay? We come straight to a vote. The vote has to be a two-thirds vote to move the question. What does that mean in English? Mr. Breer could tell us, but what it means is that we would proceed immediately to a vote on a major issue. If the motion is defeated, does not get a two-thirds uh, approval, we'll go back to discussions until such time as they're either A, ready to vote, or B, somebody else will file a subsequent motion to move the question. So having said that, to be fair, if it's a second substitute, I'm sorry, a second motion to move the question, this moderator is going to be a little bit more reluctant to hear it if it's already been defeated once. So I'll just give you that piece of advice, if you will. No, you don't, sir. You don't. Okay. I know. How do you think I feel sitting up here all night? <laughs> okay. Anyhow. Yeah, I know. I hope it was a good one. Anyways, having said that, no discussion. We're going to vote now on the question of do you want to move the preceding question? Come to a vote on it. If you vote yes, we will vote immediately on the question thereafter. If you vote no, we go back to more discussion. Everybody got that? Okay. Janae is working pretty hard here. Hold on. Uh, this is where the computers, we try to program as much as we can beforehand. 
but we can't predict when something like this is going to jump in. So, again, this is only our second time doing the computers. We like the system a lot. We still have a lot to learn how to make it smoother and better. Can I say something while we wait? Move the vote. Well, okay. We understand that's moving the question. That's what we're talking about. Okay. That's what we're going to vote on. So, if you are in favor of moving the question, what you're going to do is vote yes. If you're not in favor of it, you're going to vote no, and we're going to start the voting now. That's all right. Don't worry about that. We'll have a vote. We're just hiding this vote for now. I hope they're voting in the other room as well. Okay, 20 seconds is up. We're going to get the count from the other room, then we'll show you this count. We're just afraid that somehow somebody from this count's going to go next door and may potentially have some influence on voters. Can't quite figure out how, but make it a, as clean a vote as possible. We're doing it that way. They can't see this screen. I mean, it's not going to help you. This screen doesn't show you the vote, Jeff. I don't know if you're seeing this. No, I don't think they do, do they? No, they don't. No, they don't. Okay, now do we have the, the, the ticket vote? No, do we have the ticket vote? Oh, they are correct. We switched out everybody? Okay, well, I apologize. You were right. There are no more clickers there. Oh, they're all clickers. I'm sorry. So we're good. Okay. So the vote passes. We're going to move the question. Now, let's go back to where we were. This is a two-thirds vote on a substitute motion. The only part of the substitute is defining grain and storage. I think the rest of it is to approve the article as written. Except for that, it's the exact same original article is what the motion is. So if you want to approve this, you vote yes. If you don't want to approve it, you vote no, okay? And it's a two-thirds vote. We're going to have, again, the 20 seconds, and I will tell you when to start, and you can begin voting now. We're voting on the article now. Time has expired. As you can see, this article is defeated, okay? It did not achieve a two-thirds vote. Now, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, uh, we're going to take our break, but we have to decide what the proponents want to do about the second and third zoning articles or what the planning board or anybody wants to do. So I'm going to give you some time to think that over. We're going to take our break right now. We'll resume in 15 minutes. I can't hear about it. Okay, let's get seated, please. Okay, somebody can help me out here. I don't know if we have any voters that are left in the cafeteria. Can somebody give me a shout as to we have voters in the cafeteria? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. I'm told, again, everybody has clickers now, so we're not going to have to worry about any part of this being on a paper vote. We're now up to Article 48. 
which is the, uh, again, a two-thirds zoning article, and it's part, of, it's part of Article 47 we just voted on, and Article 49 is also part of this uh, design. Now, on these articles, I've spoken to the proponents, I've spoken to the planning board, and I'm told that we're going to move away from the uh, motion that we have for, to approve, I uh, can't even say it, approve the article as written, and there, one individual is going to make a motion that we take no action. Now, when we say no action in Sturbridge, that means just what it says, no action. The issue is dead. It, it's defeated, okay? So if we have that substitute motion, could we have somebody make it? Mr. Smith. Yes, with the defeat of Article 47, oh, this is Kevin Smith, 148 Fisk Hill Road. With the defeat of Article 47, I would move that we take no actions on Article 48 and 49. Okay, let's deal with them one at a time. So 48, we have a motion to take no action. Do we have a second on that? Okay, now, unless somebody jumps up and now files a new motion to approve it, and it's going to be extremely difficult to approve this, where the 47, the enacting article, was defeated, uh, it's just going to die, uh, it's going to die on the vine, so to speak. That's the end of it. Hearing no motion to substitute, the, we are going to adopt the take no action, so the Article 48 is now, in fact, defeated. Now we're going to move to Article 49, which is another uh, sister article, if you will, to 47 and 48. Again, we've checked with the proponents and the planning board. They all agree that there's no point in acting on this because there's no place to place a zone that doesn't exist, so to speak. So having said we've done those two things, uh, do we have a, mo a substitute motion on 49? Again, Kevin Smith, 148 Fisk Hill Road. I'd make a motion that we take no action on Article 49. Okay, very good. Do we have a second to that? Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, I, I see no other motions coming forward. <coughs> the action will be, I'm sorry, the article will be deemed to have been defeated because we have taken no action on it. Okay, That's a, kind of a Sturbridge... Uh, unique thing we do here where we say take no action, in effect, defeats an article. Okay, we're now on to Article 50, which is the multi-use recreational field design and construction Cedar Lake Recreation Area with a two-thirds vote required. Now, this gets a little interesting. First, you've got to talk about the Finance Committee. Normally, the Finance Committee uh, makes a main recommendation. By bylaw, that's what we act on. When they acted on this article, they came up with a 4-4 split. Four in favor of making a recommendation, four against. So they have no recommendations. So we have no main motion right now for a second. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, so to speak, we have had the Recreation Committee uh, <coughs> make a recommendation. Their recommendation has been to, uh, I'm not going to read it because it's just a repeat of the article, to vote that the town will approve a sum of money. I'm sorry, the vote, I'll read it to you, I better be fair. That the town appropriate 5,400,000, 10,000, let me start again. That the town appropriates 5,410,000 and zero dollars, 5,410,000 dollars to pay costs of designing, engineering, constructing and equipping a multi-use field and accessory structures and improvements at the Cedar Lake Recreation Area and for the payment of any and all incidental and related costs, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow four million four hundred ten thousand and zero dollars repeat the number, under and pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7, Subsection 1, or any other enabling authority, and one million, one million dollars under and pursuant to General Laws Chapter 44B, the Community Preservation Act, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. <clears throat> no amounts shall be borrowed or expended hereunder unless the town shall have voted to exclude the amounts requiring to repay any borrowing authorized by this vote from the limitations on total property taxes in accordance with General Laws Chapter 59 Section 21, sub, uh, 21C, I'm sorry, subsection K, also known as Proposition 2 and a half. We'll explain that after. The Board of Selectmen and any other appropriate officials of the town are authorized to apply for federal, state, or private grants, enter into any agreements, and execute 
all documents, including contracts for a term in excess of three years, as may be necessary to effectuate the purposes of this article and to accept any gifts or grants provided to the town for such purposes. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with General Laws Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to be paid such costs by a like amount. Okay. Now, in English, it says a couple things. One is that this is a borrowing article, so this will take a two-thirds vote. Secondly, all that language I read on and on and read is issued by bonding council, lawyers who are, make sure that our language and our motions and our articles meet whatever requirements that you have to have to get a bond and be able to borrow the money. Because obviously somebody loaning the town money wants to make sure all the paperwork is correct. So that's what we got. Now, <clears throat> having said that, that's been made by the Recreation Committee. Do we have a second to that? Okay. Now, do we have, there was some discussion of substitute motions on that. Are we still doing that or are we off? Mr. Smith, can you help me on this? No, I'm satisfied with the explanation okay. I received before okay, the meeting. Okay, so we're good. This is this is the action, the main motion we will vote on. Do we have any discussion of this? If we have a lot of discussion, we're going to go back to the microphones. Ma'am, why don't you come down? I'm throwing my glasses on, so well, I apologize. Okay, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. And if Mr. McDonald has anybody over in the cafeteria that wants to speak, please send them over. We'd be happy to have them talk to us. Okay, please go ahead. Mary Lou Volpin, 65 Allen Road, Chairperson for Park and Recreation. I stand before you tonight asking for your support on this article, the Multi-Use Recreational Field Design and Construction at Cedar Lake Recreation Area. This Art, this article will fund the finalized design, permitting, and construction of improvements. Design and permitting will include a traffic study and other required elements for site plan review, as well as conservation requirements such as stormwater design. Improvements include an artificial turf multipurpose field, uh, 52 parking spaces, and accessibility upgrades to the town playground, beach, and athletic courts. We have applied for the ADA grant and the completed design will allow us to apply to any more that we may find. The 2007 field study, 2011 and 2018 open space and recreation plans all recommended additional fields and towns for local youth leagues and this would be the first field constructed to meet the need for fields in town. This project will coincide with roadway expansions and provide a roundabout to prevent public access to the residents at the end of the road which understandably is a main concern. We'll be putting in sidewalks, lighting, safety issues, all of this will be addressed in the design and we will work with the residents of that area so that we can both benefit from this. We have 1,700 child athletes and 185 adult participants. The current fields are not adequate to support these existing needs. There's no regulation size multipurpose field in town requiring soccer, football, cheer, and lacrosse leagues to outsource to other towns for field space or practice on the outfields of existing baseball fields. Our existing grass fields are not designed for the overuse and rough play of these sports, leaving the fields in poor condition for the baseball and softball leagues. This will finally be our first town field as a home base for the soccer and Tantasqua Youth Football and Cheer Program, <coughs> serving over 700 youth athletes. The history of field discussions in Sturbridge is extensive. This location was chosen after careful consideration and review. The town has reviewed and denied multiple field proposals in the past. The Recreation Committee listened to the concerns of the residents and provided a smaller scale project that enhances our existing recreation area. In addition to being a centrally located town-owned property with existing recreation amenities and no major developmental concerns, the Cedar Recreation Area is connected to the Burgess School by the new Discovery Trails. Continuing to develop this area is a great enhancement to the community. It's a great spot. What other place for an athletic field than right next to your park and rec area? 
we've exhausted every other town property and we've been hit <coughs> by conservation issues, um, ledge. If we do not pass this tonight, this town, we will probably never come back again for a new field. I've been on recreation for over 20 years and we've been fighting for fields in this town for that long. Sturbridge is a pretty affluent town and our kids have to go to other towns to play ball. It's just not right. It's time that we did something for the kids in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, speaker two. Yes, well, we're gonna get to it. Speaker two, you're gonna speak in a second. Do we have a volunteer to replace speaker one? <laughs> this young lady. Yes, she can. I did. You're hiding behind me. Just wait your, excuse me, wait your turn. We'll get to you in a second. Yes, Just hold on, we take a drink here. Okay, speaker number two, please proceed. David Monroe, 33 Breakneck Road, Starbridge. And I think it's a great idea to have more fields. There are two primary concerns that I wish to have addressed. First is the poor condition of our current fields, which I do understand has to do with overuse, but there's also other issues such as poison ivy and other types of um, uh, dangerous conditions that can be um, found in the current ones we have. The second one has to do with the fertilization that's going to be required for recreation fields and its proximity to the lake. So therefore, um, we already have some pretty serious pollution issues and um, uh, invasive species issues uh, in the lake. Uh, this is only going to be exacerbated by uh, uh, a lot of fertilizer runoff, which you can't stop entirely. Uh, so I would be very interested in hearing what the Conservation Commission would have to say about that if there's a member here. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a representative of the Conservation Commission here tonight who would like to address these issues? I'm sorry? Okay, well, that's a point. That's a very good point. Okay, I have people waving. Yes, do you, you want to address this Conservation Commission? Rats you get called on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You almost go through the whole committee the whole night and didn't get called on. No such luck, huh? We've got two people here. Clarification. Certainly. It's an artificial turf field. Let's hear grass. then let's have the conservation commission answer that. Thank you. Okay. okay. See, you move too slow, Mr. Goodwin. Uh, Ed Goodwin, uh, 19 Orchard Road. Uh, to the quest first question, it's artificial turf. So uh, that's not an objective, I mean, objection. And the second one was the, the, um, the, the area has wetlands, uh, but everywhere has wetlands. So I wouldn't really, I don't, I, there isn't anything dramatic that I can tell you about that that should change your vote or uh, in, in one way or the other. So, is there any, was there any other question on? Please speak in the microphone, Mr. Goodwin. We can't hear you when you're talking off. Anything else, sir? Okay, thank you for speaking. Thank you. Okay, so that's speaker number one. We're going to ask this young lady to come back at this point. Okay, first, would the proponent explain why we are able or why you're recommending using Community Preservation Act funds when Mass General Laws 44B Section 5 specifically prohibits the use of these taxpayer funds to purchase and install artificial turf? So is that a question? That's a question. Okay, so who are you addressing that question to? The proponent of the article because CPC funds have been committed in the amount of $1 million and the law prohibits the use of those funds to purchase artificial turf. Okay, well, I guess the first question is, you're addressing it to the proponent. I think right now as we stand, it'd be the Recreation Committee unless somebody else wants to step forward and answer that for them. Okay, maybe Mr. Bridges, who well, I think wanted to address this article anyways. 
Mr. Bridges, do you want to talk about this? There are elements of the project that don't include the actual purchase of the artificial surface that would be applicable to the use of community preservation funds. Do we have a written legal opinion on the use of these funds for any part of the installation, preparation of the land and the purchase of the fields? Do we have a legal written opinion? Next, I have some additional ones that are not pertinent to the community okay. preservation funds. Okay, please proceed. You're still within your time. All right, this project is not on Cedar Street. It's on Cedar Pond Road. This is a dead-end street, two-tenths of a mile long. The parking area for this installation is 1,000 feet. So that is less than the distance from the Burgess School Elementary Road up to the parking lot. All of this traffic seven days a week for all the practices once this seven and a half million dollar project goes through is going to be on that road. The site plan, as you heard, requires a rotary that the town believes is going to keep all of these cars from traveling the additional 50 feet into where our homes are, where the only place that folks are going to have is to turn around is in our driveways. Next, one of the public officials who is weighed in on this project, said he wasn't sure where it was going to be, so he drove down the street and took a look and saw some woods and a couple of houses. There are 27 homes down there. One of my senior citizen neighbors was born in the house that she lives in. She has lived there her entire life, and now the entire character of this area is going to change. The people who live in those homes have dealt with the recreation area, which has not always been a good neighbor. We accept the annoyance of trash, improper parking, trash barrels lit on fire, vandalism, the occasional loud, vulgar music that comes from the kids playing at the basketball courts. We accept all of this. But to now put this field in is going to change the character entirely. A few years ago, a skateboard park was put in. The town failed to keep it up, just like they failed to keep up the fields in good condition. It became a nuisance and had to be torn down. And now the 10,000 square foot piece of tar and the pavilion remain there as a blight that we live with because of the failure to maintain that area. In addition to that, this particular AstroTurf field will be put in and it's going to be a chain linked area. It's going to be locked and it's not going to be for people who visit the rec area to use. The people now that go down there to fish, to swim, to play pickleball, to play tennis, they're going to exchange this area, this quaint, quiet place where people come to relax, and it's going to be taken away from them and given to the sports community. Maybe that's the way that we have to go. I am not quarreling with the need for fields, but this is not the right place. It's going to look like a cage, just like the kids call this turf field up here. It's a cage, it's gonna be a blight, and it's not gonna be fair to the people who are using that field now, and it's, I mean, that area now, and it's certainly not gonna be fair to the residents. The destruction of our neighborhood for this project is not right, and it is not fair. In 2015, the town voted to purchase land to build fields on. Unfortunately, the town didn't do its due diligence to make sure that that property was suitable for fields, and now we have a $1.5 uh, million open space area, which is great because I am an advocate of open space, but we bought it for fields and it couldn't be used. So this project already cost $1.5 million because of that mistake. The road, this 1,000 foot stretch of road is going to cost $1.9 million to improve. A road that essentially doesn't need it is going to have $1.9 million spent on it. So the cost of this field is $1.5 million already because of a mistake, $5.4 million of taxpayer money, and then $1.9 million for one field. We certainly can do better than this. Attorney Mapplebeck, you're running short on time, so wrap it up. Then I shall stop. The point has been made. Yes, we need fields, but not here. It's not fair to the town, and it's not fair to the residents that live down there. Thank you. Okay, that was Speaker 1. Do we have a Speaker 2 up there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your pee break. I did. <laughs> My name is Michael Young, 
and I live at 237 Cedar Street in Sturbridge. And I know we live in very strange times uh, with COVID, with rampant inflation, uh, a lot of people trying to make adjustments, especially small business owners who are uh, really experiencing a hard time. Um, all I'm going to say here and now for the people who remained and the people who didn't, who didn't, who flew the coop after they got what they wanted, which is fine, it's part of the democratic process, but we just turned down as a town a business development that was going to bring us two baseball fields, a soccer field, and a football practice field for, um, will be mostly produced by Pop Warner. Uh, so we're looking at two baseball fields, soccer field, football field, hiking trails that would also ultimately generate one, 1 1.2 million in taxes to the town. We turned that down, 1.2 million in income to the town. And now, as much as I support athletic fields, which is why I supported uh, the equestrian package, we're now being asked to spend $5 million in a really cramped, unsuitable location, in my very humble opinion. So however the vote goes on this tonight, I just hope you will take into consideration what I'm saying here. We just gave away a million a year in order to spend $5 million in a very bad location. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We're doing good here. Let's keep this under control. Speaker number three. We need another speaker number two. Do we have a backup up there? Somebody wants to speak? Bailey Applegate, 151 Walker Pond Road. Um, there are over 10 baseball fields in this town alone already that are misused, mistreated, and in disrepair. There are even private fields that the town has turned down renting. I don't feel that a new field will help solve the problem. I feel instead the, the problem will continue as the fields degrade and the town refuses to take care of what it has. And that's all I've got to say on that. Thank you. Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, anybody want to chime in here? Seeing nobody, we'll go to speaker number one. Okay, who was here first? Don't fight. Okay. Play nice. Cool. Very serious. Can everybody hear me? I'm a little small. <laughs> um, Juliana Kozuski, 36 Arnold Road, um, also a member of the Rec Committee, but I'm coming to you tonight um, as a parent, as a sports family in town. Um, just joined the Rec Committee, so you know, there is that too. But, um, you know, being a sports family in town, you see the traffic, you see the misuse of the fields. This field right here, across from our rec facility, it makes sense, right? We just approved tonight an uh, awesome senior center, which is going to be fantastic for our elder community. Um, what about our younger community, right? It's going to be half the cost on your taxes, right? It was 60 cents something. Uh, sorry, I'm not quoting the correct numbers. This is going to be about half of that, right? And it's going to benefit our kids for the long haul. I want safe fields for my kids, right? I know that was a big issue that a lot of folks were seeing on Facebook is, I want a cheap field. Well, cheap fields are not safe for our kids. We're doing the due diligence, right? We're looking at the safety. We're looking at our economy. We're looking at all of the environmental. We're doing the due diligence here. We're listening to the community. We're listening to the neighbors. And we want to be good neighbors here. Um, this project also includes a lot of ADA upgrades, which I think is needed, right? We want to be inclusive. We want all kids to be able to play on our facilities which is important to me as a parent, as a member of this society. Um, so I'm encouraging everybody to really think about that, right? It is a lot of money, we're all paying taxes, but we want to incorporate everybody here. And this is a really great opportunity for all of us um, to have a facility in our recreation department. It's right across from our facility. Um, and it's gonna cause a lot of benefits 
for our young community. We're catering to our older community, and now we need to do something for our kids. So, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, that's speaker one. Speaker two, do we have a speaker up there? Yep. Okay, go ahead, sir. Steve Sexton, Seneca Lane. Uh, I know the area well. I live on the lake, so I've got great appreciation for not only the area and many of the points earlier made by Lee. Uh, at the same time, I've been in this town for 20 years. My kids have grown up. I know the field issue just as much as anybody else. And frankly, to me, this is our failures of the past giving us right now, because of all the other process challenges that we've had, Right, in Plimpton, Town Barn, you name it, the list goes on and on, everybody knows it. So here we are with what I would say is absolutely one of the worst options we could ever have. I understand the proximity to the school, but for anyone that's in that area, for the amount of dollars that we're looking at spending here, this is just the upfront cost, right? For all the issues that have been described thus far, now we want to introduce for game days out-of-town residents, right, who are also going to now want to use this rec area, what are we going to do to maintain traffic, right? We have 52 spots, right? They don't want to have parking on the road. That's where the parking is today. Frankly, if you go down to the rec at any point in time, you probably need 20 spots alone just for pickleball, right? So that now leaves us about 32 spots for game days. Well, where are those folks really going to park? Because at any point in time, I could argue, you probably need at least 60, 80, even up to 100 spots when you talk about football teams. So how does all that effectively work operationally in this area when you get to Saturdays, no matter then all the traffic on Cedar Street, and how are we actually going to manage that? So a lot of this comes back to cost. And the upfront is only the tip of the iceberg, as far as I'm concerned. I'd be interested if, if finance has any further opinion on some of that too, because to me this is where we grossly underestimate a lot of these projects, and frankly it's a part of the reason why we have all these field issues today. So I don't know if, if I could ask of the Finance Committee any opinion that you have on this as well, because I just see this being just all kinds of downward sorts of uh, challenges for us as well. So are you posing a question to the Finance Committee? I am, yes. Since they voted 4-4, no recommendation, I'd be interested in their opinion as well. Well, okay, I guess to be fair, if you want to get an answer, there's two sides of the story. I think each well, side of the table perhaps should answer it. I, uh, I'm sitting here Mr. thinking Smith, how do you want to help us? I, I honestly, usually, doesn't matter what side of the equation I'm on, I speak for the Finance Committee as a whole. In this case, we are deadlocked four to four. We took two votes. One vote was to take no action on, on this article, and it failed four to four. And then the second vote was taken, or I might have it backwards. The first vote was actually taken on an amended version of this article because we added some a little verbiage. That failed four to four. We went to a no action vote. That failed four to four. Unfortunately, as a finance committee, we have no opinion on this article because we're, we're just absolutely deadlocked. Yeah, what I find interesting, right, this is the one article where, frankly, we have no positive vote from finance, right? And I think in, in large part, this whole issue goes back to Article 39, 2019, where the 49,000 was passed just to start to do the feasibility study. We came here in June of this year where they wanted the additional feasibility funds for that particular area was expanded to 58, 60, and 70 Cedar Street, and that was voted down by this very town meeting back on June 7th, right? And here we are coming back full circle again with all of that being now put into the entire proposal to move forward. So it feels like it's just revisiting, going back to the well. And from a process standpoint, I struggle with that when we've already had that vote before. So as far as you know, other points that can be made, you know, I think Lee did a great job in, in speaking to those. I also do wonder, just long term, right, where this goes as far as everything that needs to be looked at conservation-wise, that's always been the downfall as far as Plimpton and some of these other properties, right? This is a stormwater area. This is a, a, a rare species area that's been marked as a part of our 2018 strategic plan. There's a whole host of things that need to be really looked at. You're running uh, short on time, sir, that. so bring right. it in. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have a speaker with question number three, uh, host number three. Do we have, a, we have a speaker for one? Do we have somebody else for two? Any other people? Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, yes, um, my name is Shelly Fairbrother from Nine Deer Run Circle. I just, um, I love this town, um, but I was just wondering if, 
I know this gentleman behind me wants to say something really fast, but I was just wondering if we could call to vote because I, I, I understand we have some new information, but a lot of it's opinions, and I, I appreciate everyone's opinions, but unless somebody has any new information or anything new to say, I believe that most of us um, walked into here knowing, um, you know, we educated ourselves prior to the, prior to the meeting tonight, um, and I'd love for us to call to vote. Okay, so as I understand you correctly, are you moving the question, asking to have a vote here? Yes, I okay. am. Okay, that is seconded now. So the speakers, hold on, we're gonna see what we do. Uh, no discussion on this. If you vote in favor of this, we will have a vote on, the, on this article. If you vote against it, our speakers will continue until we either vote or we have a, a second motion. Again, after the, the defeat of a motion to move the question, this moderator is gonna be very reluctant to adopt the second motion, but let's see how this goes. So, if you're going to vote to move the question, which means it's a two-thirds vote, if you approve it, we then move to vote the actual article, and that's the end of the discussion. Okay, so again, same rules apply. 20 seconds, when I give you the signal. I'm sorry? Okay, uh, Janae, you're gonna have to put a motion in. We're doing a motion right now. Okay. It's showing motion. Okay, let me put my glasses on, see what we got here. Right. Might help. Simple majority. Yeah, this is, yeah. This. Okay, everybody happy? Okay. <clears throat> the official, you'll ever know about this, the official record is the town clerk's minutes. This stuff is all very helpful and nice and helps us, but that's not the record. The official record is what she writes down and uh, the minutes that she submits. She certainly uses this to back her position up, but sometimes, you know, clerical things happen, so you got to bear with it. Okay, so are we ready to vote now? It's going to be 20 seconds when I give the signal. And uh, a, a vote yes means you want to move the question. A vote no means no. It takes a two-thirds vote. And if we're all set to go, let's vote. Start. Five seconds. Okay, stop. Everybody has clickers now. The other room and us, so we should be able Let's make sure all the numbers come in, okay? Just gonna give a few minutes for them to come in. See if anything changes. See if there's any problems over there, anyway? Yeah. Okay, just hold on. Okay, so if it looks like the issue has been moved, we're going to 537 in favor, 36 against. So now we move immediately to the vote. Sorry, Mr. Speakers, Ms. Speaker, we don't need you right now, so why don't you grab a seat? <laughs> Worth waiting for, wasn't it? Okay. Again, this is a two-thirds vote. This is a borrowing article. So it has to pass by two-thirds or it is defeated. Okay, everybody ready to vote? A yes means you are uh, supporting the Recreation Committee's main motion that they filed to uh, borrow this money through the terms that were set forth to build the process. Primarily it's from bonding. A million dollars comes from the uh, CPC, Community Preservation Committee. Okay, so that's what we're voting on. A yes vote means you want it. A no vote means you don't want it. It takes a two-thirds vote. Is everybody ready? We all set over here. Guys, we, Jeremy, we all set over here? Okay, we're all set over there. 20 seconds are starting now. Five seconds. We're done. Okay, wait for everything to come in here.
Okay, it's 121 in favor, 438 against. It is defeated. Okay, please. Let's move on to the next article. Next article is uh, that the town authorized, I'm sorry, I'm gonna read this thing correctly. No, I've got that one done. Okay, here we go. We still have some meeting to do, so let's please get on this, okay? Article 51, am I missing something here? Yeah, here's 51, okay. Community preservation, outbuilding removals. And this is a recommendation of Finance Committee the seven nothing to approve CPC funds. Could you please keep the noise down? We're still trying to run a meeting. So CPC funds for the removal of the lead mine barn from the lead mine parcel. Recommendation of Finance Committee again is to approve it seven nothing. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, and we all set the vote. If you vote, this is majority rule. If you vote for it, yes, it means you'll approve it. No means you don't approve it. So we're going to commence the voting right now. Five seconds. We're all done. While we're waiting for the tabulation, make sure you pass in your uh, clickers on your way out. Okay, 384 in favor, 77 against. Majority rule, it passes. Article 52, Community Preservation Grand Trunk Trail Construction. Um, there is a, apparently a typo in the article. If you look at the third line, it says for the construction of a portion of the Grant Trunk Trail in Sturbridge. Uh, that's a typo, it should be the Grand with a D trunk. Do we have a motion, a substitute motion to change that T to a D? Is there a second? Okay, and approve the rest of the article as written, is that correct? Yes. Okay, okay. So now we're just going to approve the grand with a D, not grant with a T. Everything else is the same. It's $92,000, and again, it comes from the CPC uh, to do that. Any discussion on that? Okay, hearing none, we're going to start voting when I give you the command, and we're going to start now. Five seconds. Time is up. Okay, it passes 378 to 71. Article 53, funding for police union contract. The recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve the article as written, and that's to take $112,000 from free cash. Now, we haven't talked about free cash tonight. That is money that was raised by taxes in previous years, or even this year, and was not expended for the purpose that it was raised for. So it's free cash in the sense that it's no longer committed to any budget item. It's available for other purposes. So it's a fund of money that's off to the side that we have available in addition to money that we want to borrow, we've seen a couple of those tonight, or money we're going to raise from taxes. So can, Kevin, can you tell me how much do we have in free cash? $6,221,006. No change? No, no change. Thank, thank you. Okay. So you, that's what you have, so you're not, you decide whether or not you want to spend the money. It doesn't appear you're actually cleaning out the till when you do this. Any discussion on this? Okay. Any. That's it, okay, we're ready to vote. Again, 20 seconds. Yes means you approve this. The money's not coming directly from your taxes. It's from, I'll call it previous taxes, if you will, okay? Having said that, 20 seconds to vote starts now.
Five seconds. Time. Three hundred forty-seven thousand. I'm sorry, three hundred forty-seven people. Yeah. Imagine those clickers. Uh, it was voted in favor. Sixty-five voted against it. So that passes by far more than a majority. Okay. In Article Fifty-four, funding for the construction of a public parking lot at Five Hundred One Main Street in Sturbridge, and that's the transfer from free cash, three hundred thousand dollars. I've explained what free cash is. The recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve it 7 nothing. The recommendation, I can't even say it, recommendation of the Board of Selectmen is to approve the article 5 to nothing. Do we have any discussion on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At a prior town meeting, the money to buy the property, clear it up, and do the design of the parking lot was approved. So the town bought the property. It was cleaned up by the proper, prior property owners, now just a vacant piece of land on Route 20. So this money actually provides for the construction. It has been through the Planning Commission. It has been through the Conservation Commission. We are now ready to build it. In addition to this $300,000, we have a $50,000 earmark grant from Senator Gobi's office through the state budget to uh, uh, help build this parking lot. Um, the need for parking along Route 20 was identified in the 2014 uh, commercial tourism district plan, and this is just one element to an eventual overhaul of Route 20 through Sturbridge. So that's why that's why we're here tonight on the parking lot. Thank you. It, it will Anyone provide about 25 parking spaces. Anyone else care to speak on this issue? Yes, up there. Hi, uh, Jared Burns, 13 Stony Brook Drive. Uh, a lot of uh, towns uh, being very progressive with. Uh, providing for electric vehicle charging at public parking lots. Is there any provision or requirements in the plans for this particular lot? Not, not at this time, but eventually when we get do when we have an opportunity to get power down there, we probably could. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak in this article? Yes, sir. How you doing, Jay Gormley, uh, Shampoo Road? Just doing the math, when we paid for this property, we're looking at $14,000 a parking spot, not including the purchase of the property, so these are $25,000 parking spots. It just kind of seems a little crazy for a parking lot for 20 at this price. That's all I have. Okay, please, if you want to speak, put your hand up, we'll let you talk. Anyone else want to be heard on this? No takers? Is there a hand over here? So you're behind my light, so yeah, please come forward. Mike. Somebody's behind my light, yeah. Mary Wheeler, 14 Miller Road. I am astounded by the price of paving a parking lot. I watched my neighbor's driveway go in. It was done by professionals. They went down two feet. He has a huge driveway, and he has a second driveway. It cost him $13,000. Is this parking lot 10 times bigger? Okay. Well, I'm not answering the question, so if you... I'm asking. <laughs> Thankfully. I'm asking. I think it is ridiculous. Why can't the town pave the parking lot. The town bought the parking lot. The town is using the parking lot. Why cannot the town pave the parking lot? Okay. Well, that's, a, that's your position. Thank that you. Is my Anyone point. else care to speak now? Can, can I just add? Let something? me just see if there's any new speakers. Yeah, Mr. Anyone else that hasn't spoken yet on this article? I'd like to put there. Yes, ma'am. Tara Linton, 7 Seneca Lane. Um, through the process of the fields, um, I learned about Chapter 90 funds, which the state gives approximately $430,000 annually to Sturbridge and 
other municipalities. Um, paving is included in those funds. As I understand it, the town has $1.9 million worth of Chapter 90 funds that have been carried over from year to year, so it seems like this might be a good option. Thank you. Anyone else want to be heard on this? Okay. Wait a minute. I think we're Is there a hand up here? Hi. Yes. One of the, some of the things that make this parking lot expensive is that it's adjacent to the river. We have to account for storm drainage. We have certain uh, elements that keep that water that flows down the hill towards the river out of the river. So the design of this isn't just a, it's not a driveway. It's a municipal parking lot with, a, with full depth removal of the soil there, new sub base, new drainage, curbing, signage, uh, stormwater detention to keep that water out of the river. Um, we're not aware that Chapter 90 money can be used for a parking lot. Um, so I just asked the town attorney. He didn't know that that was, he didn't, he wasn't aware that that's an affirmative use. Um, so that's why this one's expensive. We have a picture of the drawing, if we can bring it up. It's the last slide. No, that's not it. We gotta keep going. It's the last slide in the deck. So that's the, that's the parking lot, and that whole bottom end is a rainwater and stormwater detention area to keep the water out of the river that's right at the bottom of, the, of your picture. So it's not just as, it's not a driveway. It's expensive. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I think we had two yeah, after her. Trish Barasa, 133 Brookfield Road. Just a question, now that she pointed out the Chapter 90 funds, is there any reason why we can't hold this until you can find out if we could use that? If there's over a million dollars in the Chapter 90 funds, why wouldn't we use that first? Everyone's looking at you, Mr. Eichmann. <laughs> Do we have an answer? Is the, if I understand the question, the question is, can we use Chapter 90 funds for a parking lot, correct? Yeah, in my opinion, as far as I'm aware, you cannot. Uh, the reason being, Chapter 90 funds are essentially reimbursement funds based on the, my, the amount of public ways, based on mileage you have in the town. It's essentially reimbursing the town for the care and feeding of the public ways. The parking lot is a, is a separate issue. It's not in a public way. Okay, anyone else want to be heard? Was another lady? Yes. Sue Waters, 38 Farquhar. Um, I would like to propose that our town consider a gravel impervious surface that would be eco-friendly and not cost us close to a million dollars for the piece of property as well as the $300 to pave it. Um, I don't know why we need a paved uh, public lot that no one has to pave to use, including the businesses in town. So that would lay solely on each and every one of us to pay for the fancy blacktop that's going to be, that is being proposed to be put down. It's not regular asphalt, it's my understanding. Okay, so I think your position on tonight's article would be in opposition to it. Correct. Okay. Anyone else want to speak in tonight's? He is putting your arm over the, behind the desk or you want to speak, sir? No, no, okay. Yes, ma'am. Linda Kokalis, 110 McGilpin Road. Um, is there any reason why we wouldn't be able to use Betterment money for this, since it kind of fits the category for tourism, public safety, things like that? I think I've spoke to a couple of selectmen in the past that said that it might be a good idea to start banking some of the money, opposed to buying small things over time, like banking it, getting one big thing, and it seems like it would fit for something to be able to use betterment money for, come back later with that proposal, possibly. So your position would be in opposition to this article? Yes. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak? OK, this is probably your last opportunity tonight to jump in and say something. This is a majority vote. 
Um, again, we're going to do a count on the clickers. Give me a second, we'll get organized, and we'll count backwards when I get set up here. I don't have this set. Somebody's timing was excellent. We said we wanted to finish by 10.30. If you look at your clock, you'll find out we're just about going to get there. Okay. All set to vote. We're going to start right now. Okay, we're out of time, that's it. And it's defeated. 204 in favor, 230 against. It's defeated. Okay, that concludes the business of the town meeting. I believe we're looking forward to honor Mr. Briere, a motion to adjourn Sene Dai. So moved. Is there a second? All, any discussion? All in favor? Yay. All opposed? Carries. Thank you all very much for coming. And I